So today I thought I would do something a little different. I wanted to go back and analyze this Fallout New Vegas mod that I made not too long ago. I, I made a mod for Fallout New Vegas called Mike Burnfire's Quests and NPCs. I know, such an original title for a, a generic quest pack, essentially. And that's kind of what it was. It would just add NPCs and quest givers randomly around the way, not, not randomly, but in various locations around the Mojave Desert. So there's a few here in Good Springs, there's one or two down by the Mojave Outpost. Just, just things to find here and there. Obviously inspired by other mods that do similar things like Chris Takahashi's interesting NPCs, or Good Springs filler, or the Saxon Quest pack that we did recently. D d things like that. The best part of New Vegas modding is forgetting what mods you have installed and ending up doing a casino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just saw a bunch of things popping up because this is a brand new save file. I wanted to start off with a brand new save file. Yeah, I wasn't sure what inspired me to make a New Vegas mod other than the fact that I've enjoyed so many other people's New Vegas mods. I don't necessarily think I could do better than them, especially given my limited knowledge of modding and New Vegas modding especially. But I thought I could try and do something, and I'm overall happy with how it turned out. Although I do look back on some quests and some NPCs and think uh, they could be done better, or they should not have been done because they... Uh, if, I, if, I, if I were going to go back today, I'd probably start ripping out a few of these characters because I'm just not happy with how they turned out. But some of them I'm content with. And so I, I figured I would talk to y'all about the things that I've added and what I learned in the process of making New Vegas mods, aside from the fact that they are indeed time-consuming, what did I learn while I was making this mod for Fallout New Vegas? Is it on the Nexus? It is indeed on the Nexus. You may need to have not safe for work content turned on, uh, not because there's any nudity, but because some of these characters drop some naughty words. Arc Charger, you're the, you're the mod author behind the... Uh, Another millennia weapons pack. You got inspired by a desire to make something that you were more content with. You didn't like the takes the other millennia repacks and wanted a more lore friendly and modular take. Yeah, people have their own inspirations, their own reasons for, for being motivated to make some mods. The boomer additional quest is one that comes to mind. I'm actually quite happy with how that turned out, but we'll get to that. I'd like to go through each and everything that I've added as far as I can remember. I do have a, a guide, a note list of uh, things that I've added, so I'll be following that. And anything that is missing, I will try to remember, and then I can show it to you all. Agent Fuse, you say a lot of your earlier projects come from some variety of spite. <laughs> That's, we're all motivated by different things, and if, if spite is what caused you to make the Uncanny Research Valley, then by God, more power to you, although I'm, I'm not sure that's healthy. The Mike Burnfire Companions mod that you made came from you saying, it would be simple to make, and then thinking, well, it would be simple to make. <laughs> it, it, it was probably simple, but also time-consuming. Gathering up all the clips and then making sure they were all lip-synced. Kujo Knight, for those who want the mod, look for Mike Burnfire's NPCs and Quests by Mike Burnfire on Nexus Mods. Again, not a very creative name on my part, but it gets the point across. The Eldorado Legion quest mod that you made came from you being upset that New Vegas had the line, the Legion would love to take this place, and then doing nothing about it. Well, there are quite a lot of mods that address the missing content in this game, the unfinished content, and uh, the lore breaks, and things that... Uh, thread lines that aren't followed up upon. So I'm sure you're not the only one who's motivated by being disappointed by what is in the vanilla game. Looking forward to Kingman when that one comes out. It'll be a lot of fun, I think. Funny that we're talking about New Vegas mods and you're literally sorting yours out. More power to ya. I hope you have an easy enough time with that. Is this the mod that adds Mike to the game, or is that a separate mod? No, that is the uh, the one eight bad. <laughs> no, that is the one that Agent Fuse made. Agent Fuse here in the, the chat made the Mike Burn Fire companion, the the Zack and Mike companions that you can find in Novak, as well as Legion Mike and a few various other characters inspired by the channel. What's the mod and where can you download it? It's on the Nexus. I should probably include a link to it. You think Salt Lake Stories is fantastic. I have not yet played that one. I need to play a few more New Vegas mods, and hopefully that is something we can do in the near future. So one of the first things that you find out when trying to create a New Vegas mod is that the Gek, 
The creation kit in which you make mods is not exactly the most stable piece of software. You have to get in the habit of saving often because it likes to crash for seemingly no reason. The GEC certainly crashes a lot more than New Vegas the game itself, which, uh, yeah, that's not a good sign. The GEC is a terrifying program, <laughs> yeah. Also, if you want to have lip-syncing animations for your characters, the lip-syncing files that accompany the New Vegas creation kit don't work. I don't know if that has been fixed 10 years on, but it wasn't a few years ago when I was trying to make the mod. The official online guides, or unofficial online guides, say to install Skyrim and then take some of the files out of Skyrim and copy them to your New Vegas folder so you can actually generate lip files. It's a mess. It's an actual mess just to get started. But eventually I did get started, and with my background of making video games in RPG Maker 2000 a good 20 years ago, I had a little bit of a head start. I understood a little bit of the basics on things like variables and scripting and integers and switches and things like that. Um, so I was able to get into it not too badly. What's the new mod you're looking for? Well, I'm talking about this mod from a good year ago at this point. What is a good way to get into modding Fallout 4? Is it any more approachable than Fallout New Vegas? Any good guides or channels on the subject? I don't know. From my experience, I w it was easy enough for me to learn Fallout New Vegas' modding, the GEC, but the Fallout 4 dialogue system in the GEC is, a uh, is, it's different. So learning how to make dialogue in one of the creation kits doesn't necessarily mean you're going to understand how it works in the other one. And people have made mods for Fallout 4, and they've made characters that talk and dialogue and all that, but I took a look at it and I could not wrap my head around it. It is a very different beast from New Vegas. <laughs> Skyrim is required to run Fallout New Vegas. Yep. <laughs> yep. Thank you for posting a link, Grenadier. Uh, so yes, Good Springs. There are two NPCs that I added to this area. One of them is in the General Store and one of them is in the Prospector Saloon. We will go into the Prospector Saloon first. This NPC seems to be stuck on a motorcycle, but that's not my concern. The chicken is right there. Cheyenne, stay. Don't worry. She won't bite unless I tell her to. So we meet Sunny Smiles and we can just skip her dialogue. Until next time. So here's where I made my first error. Right here is the NPC that I made. His name is Wishman, he's a ghoul, and uh, he is not scripted to recognize when the player has skipped Sunny Smiles' dialogue. So he'll be like, hey, that girl gave you a BB gun, did ya? And it's like, nah, she didn't, because I skipped that. Unlike almost anyone else who plays this game, I chose not to take the free gun from Sunny Smiles. That girl showed you how to aim that pea shooter, huh? Remember the four weapon safety rules, and you'll be just fine. And this is just me doing a, this is me doing a ghoul voice. It's not very inspired. But you know what? It gets the job done. Recording directly into the GEC is, uh, uh, it's honestly probably easier than getting someone else to do the uh, voice files. But uh, yeah, I didn't have to voice all the characters in the mod or over half of them. I could have varied it up a bit more. So the, the purpose of this character was I wanted new players to have a very basic introduction to two things. One is the concept of ghouls. If you remember Fallout 3, Gob was pretty much the first ghoul that everybody interacted with, and there wasn't anything like that for New Vegas. The first ghoul could be somebody you meet down the road, or it could be the it could be Harland if you're near the Red Rocket. It could be any of the ghouls. So I figured just put one right here in the tutorial area. So if anyone is confused on what ghouls are, they can ask Wishman. What are you? You don't seem human. Curious about this little skin condition, huh? I assure you it's probably not contagious. They call me a ghoul, but really, I'm just an ordinary person like you. The only difference being that my skin sloughed off. No big deal. The world we live in is contaminated with leftover nuclear fallout. Drink on pure water? get irradiated. Eat 200 year old food? Irradiated. If you're lucky, the radiation will just kill you. If you're unlucky, like me, you become a ghoul. Very basic explanation. I might not look pretty, but radiation doesn't hurt anymore. In fact, it heals me. If I ever get injured, I just roll around in toxic waste. 
Might be a little too much that info. That perk's come in handy, allowing me to check out pre-war ruins that scavengers can't otherwise touch. Don't have to read the entire dossier of what ghouls are. It, looking back on it, I feel like there were a couple times where I added a bit too much dialogue. Um, look, in retrospect, I think three or four text boxes will, will be enough, and after that, you should give the player back some agency. So there, I think we saw six in a row, which may have been a bit excessive. I've played a lot of New Vegas mods, and the ones that seem to go on and on with the talking can be a bit frustrating if there's no jumping off point. And you can see that Wishman here has a guns check, so we can say, this gun sucks. E Again, I did not get the gun from Sunny Smiles, but uh, that was not programmed in here. This gun sucks. Can I have your rifle? It's a shotgun. And no, you can't. I don't think he gives you his shotgun if you have a high gun skill, but... Uh, it's been a while since I've had a high gun skill in the very beginning, so I don't know. You can ask him about the four safety rules he mentioned earlier, which are legitimately the four weapon safety rules that the military teaches everyone. Rule one is to always treat your gun like it's loaded, even if it isn't. Don't wave it around like a jackass. Rule two is to always treat your gun like it's loaded, even if it isn't. It's a rule so nice, I said it twice. The third rule is to keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Have I mentioned yet to treat your gun like it's always loaded? Rule four is actually a bit different. Be mindful of what's behind your target. Bullets can miss. They can also hit the target dead on and keep on going to hit what's behind them. Think before you shoot. And we could ask the simple question of who are you and he'll just give you the dossier. My name's Wishman. Name's Wishman, veteran bounty hunter. Governments and private contractors sometimes need outside help to deal with a problem. If I like the job, I offer them my services. I've been doing this job for 50 years, longer than most. Most bounty hunters die young, but I'm very particular about the jobs I take. And you could ask him more questions about what his story is and what he's doing in town. Yeah, sure, we'll ask him what he's doing in town. Just passing through, really. I don't stay in one place for too long. It makes you predictable, easy to ambush. I heard the NCR had some bounty work at their HQ. Figured I'd give it a look, see if I wanted to take it. If not, keep moving. And that's not a joke. After you talk to him, and I believe after you've done either Run Good Springs Run or Ghost Town Gunfight, he will move on to the NCR's headquarters at McCarran, and you can find him wandering around outside there. You can find him in three locations. The first one is here in Good Springs, and the second one is outside McCarran, and then the third one is walking around Westside, I believe. Yeah, what's your story? Might as well exhaust your dialogue options while we're here. What's your story? Spent my early years as a scavenger, or prospector if you're fancy. I'd go into pre-war ruins and pull out valuable salvage. You learn early on that abandoned ruins are frequently occupied by wild animals. Monsters, raiders, slavers, malfunctioning robots. You get plenty of experience fighting hostile assholes, so transitioning to mercenary is actually pretty easy. There aren't actually a whole lot of ruins to scavenge in New Vegas. There, um, a lot of the places are hub worlds and civilized areas. I should go! And here is the other thing that he teaches you. Wishman's purpose is to teach the player character about what ghouls are and also how weapon mods work. So before you leave, he'll tell you... Before you go, take this weapon mod. I don't have any need for it anymore, and you look like you could use all the help you can get. This is an extended magazine. It'll make your pea shooter shoot eight peas instead of five. No need to use a workbench, just slap it on. Yes, the weapon modification system, which I very often forget is even in this game, that he gives you for the weapon that Sunny Smiles hey there. didn't end up giving me because I didn't take that dialogue option, but I forgot to, forgot to program Wishman with that in mind. But yes, weapon modding is in this game. It's very bare bones. There isn't anyone that really teaches you about it, so Wishman does that. If you're trigger happy, everything can become a loot dungeon. Fair enough. <laughs> if you have a high skill in guns, he give you more mods for the varmint rifle. Oh, all right. That's, that makes sense. How many of my NPCs names end in things like Wishman or Toolman? Not too many? Not too many, I don't think, but maybe more than should. There is a tutorial if you interact with Chet, but it's a pop-up. Eh. Yeah, it's just not brought to the forefront all that often. And again... My characters are all inspired by other mods that add random characters like these two added by interesting NPCs. Hello. You out of your mind? NCI has guns, Frank. Guns. There's more to war than guns. 
Yeah, like grenades and explosives. NCI's got those too. Good stuff. Good stuff. Does Chet have any dialogue options about weapons mod? I, you remember he had some about surplus ammo, which is something that barely matters. It, fair enough. He might. On, I didn't remember that he did if he did. So Wishman exists because I, I couldn't remember if anyone else did. Hello, T-Slayer. Welcome. It's going well. You're, well. you're waiting for a character named Man Man. And Wishman and the other character that I've made inside the Good Springs General Store, they don't move from their posts. They don't go to the beds like some of the other characters in town. They've all got their homes, and after midnight, they'll sleep in these random houses. My characters are very basic, and they just kind of stand there 24 hours a day. But they do have unique dialogue if you've started Ghost Town Gunfight or Run Good Springs Run to take over the town for the Powder Gangers. Uh, they will both come up with some excuse for why they can't participate in battle. There he is. So yeah, Wishman and Toolman in town here. You're looking pretty good for someone who recently got shot in the head. How can I help you? So this guy does give you a very simple quest and also teaches you the very basics on crafting, which... Sunny Smiles already teaches you how to make some, some healing powder, so it's not the first instance of crafting. But because of how useless crafting generally is in New Vegas, that there aren't very many good recipes, I figure since the player is probably going to get some leather armor from Chet anyway, we'll use Tim here to give you a recipe to upgrade your armor. So a little bit of stat progression there. Who are you? And obviously this character is... A reference to uh, Tim Taylor from uh, Home Improvement, an old sitcom from the 90s. Tim Toolman, Traveling Taylor. I'm an expert craftsman, specializing in lightweight armors made from animal pelts. The wasteland is a dangerous place, and even a little extra bit of damage mitigation can save your life. Yes, Tim the Toolman Taylor was the name of the character on the show, so here's Tim Toolman, the Traveling Taylor. <laughs> a different kind of Taylor. Don't traveling merchants normally travel with a, bra a, a pack Brahmin, and he'll tell you that's not the kind of things he does uh do you want it uh, and there you go we've got dialogue to ask him about do you know anything about the people who attacked me if you haven't yet gotten to vegas and confronted benny or gotten a lead yet sorry i wasn't in town when that was happening somebody else might know more and then can you give me any armor crafting tips i can show you a few tricks if you do something for me first you see i haven't met my quota yet this week and that means i can't eat here's the quest if you bring me 10 gecko pelts, I'll show you how to reinforce standard leather armor, which you can buy from most shopkeepers. I recently saw a gaggle of geckos. No, a swarm? A shitload. I saw a shitload of geckos up on the ridge <laughs> west of town. Might be a good place to look. I think I did pretty good with the comedic timing on that, making sure that the subtitles didn't spoil the punchline. Which is pretty much one of the reasons why I manually add subtitles to the series on YouTube that Zach and I do. I could have the in-game subtitles on, but the in-game subtitles are, are not always funny because they can spoil the punchline. If you can see the punchline four seconds before they say it, it kind of ruins the delivery. So yeah, that's why I do manual subtitles, even for NPCs, despite the fact that there is an option in-game to turn on subtitles for them. So yeah, I will do this quest. I will agree to it. Great. I'll look forward to tanning those hides. Ha ha ha. Oh, and if you haven't talked to Sunny Smiles yet, be sure to visit her in the saloon for some rifleman training. Good luck. I have not yet, and I probably won't. I'm skipping that part. So yeah, he gives you the quest. It's tail time! Reference to the old platformer video game in the PlayStation 1 era. Gex the Gecko. You say that you love the quest mod that I made, but you think the Powder Ganger stuff is the most interesting interactions when they break. Your gaggle of hitmen decided to live in Novak. Yeah. So, skipping ahead a little bit, I did make more hit squads. In-game, the vanilla game has Legion hit squads if you're vilified by the Legion, and NCR hit squads if you're vilified by the NCR. So I added three more kinds of hit squads. Powder Ganger hit squads, Great Khans hit squads, and Brotherhood of Steel hit squads. Uh, because I, I wasn't aware of this, but if you go to specific areas on the map, there are actual places where if you are vilified by Powder Gangers, they will actually ambush you. That's a vanilla interaction. But because I had never found it in all my years of playing this game, I kind of figured that I'll add my own. Uh, but the hit squads that are added, the hit squads that are in the vanilla game, the NCR and Legion ones, uh, the coding on that is quite complex. I didn't fully understand it. So the coding on the hit squads that I made are a lot more simple, 
which means they do end up in the weirdest places. Unlike Legion hit squads, which will not follow you into the town of Good Springs or the farthest... Co they've got a range. They won't travel past a specific range, but my hit squad basically have the Malcolm Holmes AI, and they will hunt you down to the ends of the earth. So they end up in the weirdest places. Uh, for Zach and I, they showed up while we were at the Sierra Madre. I was watching Al Chest Breach play through this mod, and they followed him into Nellis Air Force Base, and they got bombarded by the Boomers. Uh, and only some of them died, the other ones did not, and they, they just did not behave properly. And I also got a lot of feedback that the Powder Ganger Hit Squad, the group of four Powder Gangers that show up if you're vilified by the Powder Gangers, yeah, they're, they're difficult for a level 2 character to contend with. So after you beat the first mission of the game, the Ghost Town gunfight, and you become vilified by the Powder Gangers, you immediately have a Hit Squad of very tough enemies hunting you down. That I got a lot of negative feedback on that. Might have been my biggest blunder there. Biggest misstep. Did I ever play the New Vegas Quest mod that has a ton of Sly Cooper references? I have not! Otherwise, I would know exactly what you're talking about, and I don't. You say you got an outside prim along the road, no one expects the Powder Ganger hit squad. They just showed up all over the place. Absolutely. Your previous run, you had the NPCs and they added a bit of flavor. Did have the problem of it being a Tale of Two Wastelands run where you walked in wearing Enclave Power Armor as he taught you how to reinforce leather armor. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, Yeah. Yeah. Pardon me, it is getting late in the evening. Let's skip ahead until morning and then maybe set the time scale so it's not dark every two minutes. Set time scale to three. There we go. So yes, for this quest for Tim Toolman, you can get just ten gecko pelts. If you bring ten gecko pelts in, you get the very basic reward. But if you do the optional objective, a secret optional objective, and kill the, the poison-spitting golden gecko, which is... If you follow the waypoint, you'll you'll get there. It will give you a golden gecko pelt, and uh, Tim will have more dialogue on that. One of the issues that I discovered while I was making this particular quest is that uh, geckos do not spawn with gecko pelts. There's like a 60% chance for a dead gecko to have a pelt on it. So even though I put 10 geckos up here, there was no guarantee that the player was going to find 10 gecko pelts. So the way I got around that was on the golden gecko, I just put eight additional pelts on him. So, hopefully the player would have enough. Oh, I got, uh, I got a problem here. I got two different mods on. Might have to uh, fix this. I was doing a bit of reorganizing and now I have two different loot menus causing problems. One second, please. It'll be easy enough to fix. Open up the loot menu. I have just loot menu and a loot menu on, so we'll just turn one of those off, hopefully the correct one, I don't know, and then we'll get back into it. You always got a green gecko there and it's a crazy interaction. Yes, the green gecko is a gecko that normally only spawns in the Honest Hearts DLC, but I decided to drop one of them here. Pretty tough interaction for a level one character, but I just gave myself a pretty powerful gun with some overcharged ammo, so easy enough for me. What mod did I make? It is called Mike Burnfire's Quests and NPCs. Available on the Nexus. And we're going through it right now. So that one gecko I believe did not have any quest pelts, just had some gecko meat, but no pelts. Hello! We'll kill a few of these and see if they happen to have any pelts. If they would die properly, I would appreciate that. There we go, that's one. Meat, there's one hide. Good, good. And where'd the other cowards run off to? Hello, coward! Darty, aren't you? So we'll just gather a few more hides. Where did it go? Oh, it hide. Third hide. Good. Ooh, there's a dog up here. Hello, little coyote. I'm keeping my distance. We ain't got a fight. I don't have a beef with you. Respect the, respect the natural wildlife, except the geckos. Geckos gotta die, but the coyote's fine. Is it the mod that added those guys who were talking to each other in the Good Springs Tavern? No, that mod is by... Uh, Chris Takashi, that is the uh, interesting NPCs mod that inspired the creation of the, the mod that I made. And there's the there's the big one. Oh yeah, the spitting poison gecko. Gotta watch out for that. This this uh, particular firearm requires you to be a little more accurate than what I am. Oh, I think the the coyote's getting involved poorly. Yeah, the green I <laughs> this green gecko is very tough. Maybe adding it as a level one interaction for the character. Not my smartest choice. Very tanky character. And it had three hides on it. So, 
uh, less than I remember, but yeah. Hopefully after you've killed all these geckos, in addition to the one that you killed with Sunny Smiles, which will also have hides on them, hopefully then you will have all 10 that you will need. I can't remember if these young geckos that I spawned over here are different from the regular, Vanek uh, regular geckos you can find, or if I specifically had a different kind of gecko that always spawned with a hide. Uh, I went through a couple different ways of trying to make sure that the geckos would give you enough hides. Hey, level up! That one did not have a hide, sadly. Hello, Candy Candace. When you did this, the green gecko was murdered by Victor. <laughs> Let's see. We'll put it in guns for now. And Hunter? Sure, we'll do Hunter. I don't think any of my characters... Well, we'll go for later, Lady Killer, but I don't think any of the characters that I made respond to those specific perks. Very few perk checks in the mod that I made. As I recall, at least. You have this mod called Vanessa the Companion mod. She won't shut up about needing you to get, needing you to keep her drunk every 10 seconds with free whiskey. <laughs> yep, yep. Some characters were programmed and they talk a bit too much. And I definitely have to go into the files and make them quieter. Rip out their vocal cords, as I sometimes say. Make it, make it so those annoying voice lines only play once and only once, and then they're good to go. Yeah, I went through the Vanessa mod not too long ago with my Legion Mike character. A couple episodes for the, for the Legion Mike playlist. Interesting time. Uh, yes, the no-no bad run. The sex noise, sex noise. So now the waypoint has updated to bring 10 pelts to Tim Tillman. Do I even have 10 after all that murder? I have 13, good. I can just fast travel down there. It's just faster, and I can avoid that Cazador right there out the corner of my eye. So I know about Vanessa already, indeed I do. I know that Vanessa was a modded character for Fallout 3, one of the few that existed. I never used her, but I, she was brought from Fallout 3 and then given a new quest and voice lines and stuff like that. A recurring character. That part jump scared you during the New Vegas, but only the Aurelius of Phoenix video. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that, being jump scared. Before I go in and turn this quest in, let's go talk to Sunny Smiles and get this part of the quest going. Where'd, where'd Sunny Smiles go? Where does she dart off to if you haven't done this part of the quest? Howdy. Howdy. Hey, kid. Hello, Wishman. Uh, I still don't have enough gun skill, never mind. It's late enough in the day, right? It's like 8 o'clock? No, oh, no, it's... There we go. Now she should show up after 8 a.m. Eventually. Everything happens in Good Springs. Indeed it does. You hate Bethesda's recent update to Skyrim as it completely broke your game and it crashes to desktop before it reaches the title screen. And all you wanted to do was play the new Khajiit Companion mod that came out. I had the same issue. Um, there were two culprits for me. One of them was the loot menu, I believe. I had to change from loot menu RE to loot menu EE or vice versa. One, one thing or the other. And there was also a different mod. Those are the two that I had to uh, narrow down being the issues. What did I think of the Moto Bug companion mod? It was a fun little uh, fun little companion. Pl probably show it off on the channel for a little bit. Any stuff I'd recommend adding or changing? I, I don't know, maybe the voice lines were a little loud. Sunny Smiles! Have I thought about making a mod list pack for the mods I like? Nah, I, I don't have time for that. Hi there, sticking around Good Springs for a it's the same character, it looks a little different. Yeah, Vanessa is in both Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, which is kind of impressive. Uh, Doc Mitchell, do some shooting, and then we'll do a uh, quick, quick little bit of shooting here with Tony Smiles to get uh, the Powder Ganger to show up. You'd love a remaster of the mod that I made. It's got a great idea. Uh, I've been thinking about expanding onto it. I've been thinking about that. I've been tossing a few ideas around. Who knocked over this? Oh, that's right. Here's where the, the chunklas are. Okay, so now here we have Joe Cobb shows up and starts Done being nice. a bit of a brouhaha with Don't Trudy. You always blast Mr. Cobb away. That is an option. An option that quite a few people take, I think. Oh, look, a toaster. No toaster for old bread. Oh, goodness me. Get fucked. No, not again. <laughs> Thank you, Billy the Robot. Thank you. That's great. Didn't know that particular toaster was there, but indeed it was. Is that a throwing weapon? Oh, yes. Yes, I don't want to spoil the surprise too much, but yes, the chancla is indeed a throwing weapon. <laughs> you can throw them. <laughs> what is that? It looks like an, an RCW. It is the Hot Rod 
gun. I don't know much about firearms, so I couldn't tell you, but it's a custom weapon. Custom weapon from uh, Weapons Pack that adds... Yeah, adds this gun. The, Z, the uh, I think it's ZL Armaments. I believe it is. That adds this one. That's close enough. You say you picked that ability thanks to Zack and my adventures. He's a riot. He really is. I'm glad the mod author decided to go back and enhance Billy, because Billy is great. Okay, I have agreed to help Ringo, and I'm going to round some folks up in a fight. I'll try and enlist the help of my modded companions. Or not companions, but my, my, mod, my modded NPCs. Ringo has different clothes. Yes, I'm not sure what mod has changed his clothes, but now he does look like a new kick. He looks like a traitor. He looks like an actual traitor. And I know my mod will address this scuffle that's going on, but I wonder if Edgecomb Repair will. So, a complete sidetrack, there's a different mod that adds these two folks down here at Edgecomb Repair for the, um, the quest, the modded quest, to turn that schoolhouse into a, a player base. I wonder if these guys are programmed with responses. Welcome to Edgecomb Repair. Nice to meet you, Dean. Uh, nope, gotta go. Not, you don't. Nope. How about the other guy? Welcome to Edgecomb Repair. Ah, uh, okay, gotta go. Nope, okay, th those two folks did not have anything. I am not able to recruit them or even ask them about the issue. They are not tied to Novak. D Novak. They're not tied to Good Springs in any way, shape, or form. Aside from being here and making references to the, the people in town. There's been a lot of remakes of mods lately. Someone recently fixed all the 3D NPC mods for Fallout 3 and New Vegas. They're going to release a revoiced Vincent soon as well. Good, good. Yeah, someone is going through and uh, making some... Uh, the remakes of the New Vegas Bounties mods, the Some Guy mods. Yeah, some of the best mods are getting a little touch-up. So, Hi. Tim Toolman. Hello again. I also have to turn my quest in here. I got ten gecko pelts. Oh yeah, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, that's the stuff. With a bit of horse nettle and turpentine, these babies are going to tan nicely. Thanks. So that was my bad impression of the grunt that Tim Taylor made in the show. The, you know, the, the character played by Tim Allen, the, the grunt that he did. You didn't warn me about the green gecko that spits poisonous saliva. This will... Th this option only shows up if you have killed the spitting poison gecko. Uh, you fought a green gecko? I've seen them before on a caravan through Utah. Vicious bastards. I don't normally see them around here. And again, that confused grunt is a reference. I imagine it was a bit tougher than a regular gecko. Here's a few extra caps of the trouble. And then we can ask about the armor upgrade, and he will show you how to turn leather armor into reinforced leather armor. Yes, here's a guide on how to upgrade leather armor into reinforced armor using ordinary scrap metal. You can make the changes at a workbench. Easy enough, provided you have some experience. And repair. I don't know if I have the skills for that. Ah, it would seem that the character I am playing as does not have the skills required to make the upgrade. Here, take this magazine and read it before sitting down to work. It's got a bunch of tips and tricks. All right, that might push me over the edge. Not exactly a step-by-step -step guidebook, but it'll inspire some crazy makeshift solutions you wouldn't otherwise think of. Just in case the player doesn't have the skills, like I don't. And you could ask him where to get leather armor, Chet will sell it. And you could ask him where to get scrap metal, it's lying around. Thanks for the help, Tim. It's me who should be thanking you, friend. Have a great day. Do you not have any dialogue Hello again. for this current... No, okay. Before I can ask you to join me, I think I have yeah. to... Who was that guy with the iPad? I, I have to talk to Sonny Smiles and get the next step of this quest. And then I could ask other people like Easy Pete, and then maybe the characters that I made. I didn't nail the grunt, but I nailed the, uh, <laughs> I tried. I did my best. Sonny Smiles. Hi there. Sticking around good. Yeah, we're going to help bring with the Powder Gangers. We might die horribly. Well, maybe not me. Okay, now I'll go ask those folks at Edgecombe Repair and my characters. Hey, kid. Hello, Wishman. The town is about to be attacked by bandits. Can you assist? So I heard. But I think this town can defend itself from a couple of powder-addled thugs without me. Maybe they can't. Maybe they'll be brutally slaughtered down to the last man. Either way, I won't be here to find out. And then we could inquire a bit further. You're a mercenary, right? What if the town paid you? Ha! This town can't even pull together enough caps to buy a half-decent windmill. Regardless, I'm very particular about the jobs I take, and this is one I'm not taking. Sorry. Referencing back to the fact that he said he he would not be able to uh, take... He, he chooses not to take on dangerous missions, and that's how he's stayed alive so long. He's very choosy. And I don't have the option here, but I think there was a previously uh, a speech check here or something to call him a coward, which 
he it doesn't actually do anything, but it seems like that option isn't here. Maybe I decided to remove it for whatever reason. I understand. Thank you for respecting my decision. Anything else? And he has different dialogue if you're helping the Powder Gangers take over the town. See you around. He won't accompany you, and he will tell you that he'll he's leaving town before the fighting breaks out. Uh, but uh, yeah, regardless, once the once either of those quests starts, he does move out of this town and goes to his second location. And then we'll go over here and ask Tim if he wants to assist. Hello again. I need supplies to fight the Powder Gangers. I don't have anything that can defeat a horde of exploding convicts. Sorry. Eh, maybe you'll get lucky and they'll blow themselves up. And that's all you can do. Yep, see you later. And again, he has different dialogue if you're choosing to help the Powder Gangers. Hello! Hey there. Now we'll double check down here at Edgecomb Repair. Because they, they very well may have been programmed with some responses, but if they weren't, wouldn't surprise me. I'm just curious. This has nothing to do with my mod. I'm just curious. Was that Chet? Was that punished Chet? <laughs> Been hot enough for you? It's wearing me out. Hey, Dean. Uh, nope. Okay, and I, I doubt his friend has anything to say, but we'll check once more. We were all amazed to hear the doc pulled you through. Yes, thank you. Gotta go. Nope. No, no new dialogue from them. So, yeah, those are the two characters that I have here in Good Springs. And I'm not gonna go through the entirety of Ghost Town Gunfight. I, I've basically shown you everything that those two characters have to offer. You say you can't believe it's already been three years since we first entered the frontier. Yes, time has been weird. Time has been fucky wucky time dilation. Do I have shoes to throw at people? Yes, I do. I do. I'll surprise Zach with them soon, but yes, I've got some chanclas here. Oh no! <laughs> I can't. Okay. Those, are, those things are dangerous. <laughs> 180 no scoped <laughs> Joe Cobb with a freaking sandal. <laughs> I'm trying to aim this gun and I'm missing all my shots and I just throw a sandal at someone and kill him. That's, that's Fallout, baby. Oh. oh, oh, hold on. We got someone else who's asking for a sandal in the face. Oh, you got this. Wow, these things are a lot. What? <laughs> they do 10,000 damage? Who made these? Oh my God. All right, I'm going back to a weapon that's a little less silly. Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, mod added that powder ganger, and um, I know what mod added this guy. He's deleted the content. He's like, hey, how's it going, traveler? Here's directions around here. The dinky launcher? Oh, sounds fun. It's always fun when something blows up. Who are these powder gangers fighting? Wildlife? They're fighting bugs. Uh, yeah, so I always thought it, it was weird how the powder gangers never really harassed you. You know, they got an encampment right here. They got a few other encampments. But they never really challenge you or anything like that, so... I mean... I did eventually find out that there are a few ambushes dotted around in very obscure locations, but I always assumed that there was no powder gangers that would harass you going down the highway, so I added some more. Oh, we got some more geckos walking around over there. It's fine. It's fine. So yeah, not a, not quite a random encounter, but a scripted encounter. Oh god. The people that are uh, the people that I'm trying to show off are in the middle of fighting geckos, are they? Okay, okay, I'll, I'll let you guys do what you gotta do and then get back to your positions. God. <laughs> if you don't die, watch out, there's a gecko behind you. Okay, <laughs> oh no, he threw, threw a grenade at his own friend. <laughs> Careful there's, Careful there's. Okay. So yeah, things are a bit bugged right now because the, they were not supposed to be fighting those. So now, the person who's supposed to challenge me has to- Hey, you can't just walk around here with reckless abandon. Don't you know your footprints are putting a strain on our roads? There we go. As the local tax collector, I'd be willing to overlook this minor infraction to the tune of 100 caps, which will be used to repair the damage. So there we go, a shakedown on the road between Good Springs and Prim. And there are actually quite a lot of different ways to resolve this. You've got a charisma check, a strength check. You can actually pay him the 100 caps. If you don't have 100 caps, then there's gonna be problems. Or you can outright attack him. The only infraction here is going to be a spinal cord infraction. Unlike the vanilla speech checks in Fallout New Vegas, uh, this these two do not tell you if you're going to pass or fail them. So um, we could try to intimidate him with strength, but we are we are not told if it's going to succeed or not. And that was an intentional decision on my part. I do think that sometimes it would be better if the success chance or the the success certainty is hidden, which would uh, encourage players to try skills 
that they might not pass. Because in the base game, if you see a skill check or a speech check is not going to succeed, y you never take it. But there's sometimes some funny dialogue hidden behind there. So, yeah, sometimes I feel like it's better if it's hidden. So, when I was designing this interaction, I decided to make the success or failure hidden. So, I can't believe a handsome man like you resorts to threats. I might have enough charisma to charm him. What if I try to intimidate him? You sure you want to do this? Yeah, you don't look so tough. At least, not any tougher than our guns. The toll is still 100 caps. Well, we could try to charm him. I believe you're a handsome man and you should not resort to threats. <laughs> handsome? Been a while since anybody has accused me of that. Yes, his facial hair is glitching a little bit. It's, it's an unfortunate bug. Have you thought about moving to Vegas? You'd make a killing as a male escort. Ah, uh, you're just flattering me to get on my good side. And I think it's working. All right, I'll let you pass, but only because I like your face. So yeah, a couple different ways to interact with that. And also makes charisma less of a dump stat. You know, of course, there's a speech option if you want to pass the speech check. Everyone's got speech skills. But I think the speech requirements might be a little high on that, but the charisma requirements are a bit generous to compensate. Also, it's not just these three powder gangers. If you fail his challenge, if, he's, if he goes hostile, then two more will spawn around here. So it'll be a, a 5v1 at this point, which will make things a little more difficult. But yeah, that's that interaction. And again, that character was voiced by me. Just like Tim, just like Wishman, all the characters we've seen so far have been voiced by me. I really should have asked for more voice actors, should have, should have recruited some more help, but eh, it was my first mod. I thought it would be kind of funny if I voiced most of the characters. Oh, look, we got a bipedal gecko here killing a... Okay, are you going to be angry with your... Okay, okay. This gecko brute needs to go down now, apparently. Well, the bigger they are, the easier they are for this gun to hit. I should have gotten Zack to help. Well, Zack does voice a few characters. It's, it's not all done by me, but a lot of them were done by me, yes. Am I playing my own mod? Yes, I'm doing commentary on what I learned when I was playing this mod. Am I being shot at right now? What's going on here? Oh, we got a mosquito. Darty little bastard. There we go. Voicing all these characters is funny. Yeah, that's kind of the vibe I was going for, but... Could have tried to be a little more professional. Just because my name is on it doesn't mean I gotta voice all of them. What mod am I playing that's mine? It's called Mike Burnfire's Quests and NPCs on the Nexus. And yeah, those mosquitoes and things were added by the monster mod. Blood bugs and stuff like that. Isn't there a giant fire gecko hidden in the game files named Gojira? Yes, there are mods to reintroduce that character, that monster. Mike what again? It is called Mike Burden Fires, Quests, and NPCs. Am I using a Sweet Six plugin for Mo Mod? I don't know. Have I made any Fallout 4 mods? No, this is basically the only Hello. mod of note that I've made. I've made a few others. I've dabbled. I made a a companion named Doomfist, but that got taken off the Nexus because it was using voice lines from a, a different game, and uh, they, they didn't like that. I've tried a few other mods, but uh, it's basically basically just this is the only one I've made. How do I like the gun mods in Fortnite? I have not played Fortnite. So another character that I included down here, if I go past these landmines without blowing myself up. So as with Wishman who tried to introduce the character, the, introduce the player to the concept of weapon modding and ghouls, and Tim Toolman was made to introduce the character to the concept of upgrading your armor, doing some armor crafting. I try, I'm trying to make characters that fill a, a role, because as we all know, this game was kind of rushed to completion, and a lot of stuff got cut, and some places just feel neglected, and Prim is one of those places. I'm sure you all know that even if you're completely idolized by the Powder Gangers. This is a sub-faction here that has controlled Prim, and for no really well-explained reason, they will just shoot you on sight despite your reputation with them. So, uh, there are some mods out there that align them properly to the Powder Ganger faction, and they, and they don't shoot you on sight. Um, but one of my solutions was to add a Powder Ganger-friendly character on the outskirts of town who will tell you not to go into town or you will be shot on sight. And you can complete the in-game, you know, the, the in-town quest by interacting with this character. I think we can see him right here. That might be him. Yeah, I think that's him. Yeah, so even though they are technically powder gangers, they are not factioned as if they are. They're just kind of generic hostile baddies. Killing them doesn't give you ill reputation with the powder ganger faction, and they won't respond to fame or infamy. 
they are kind of mindless, and uh, yeah, it's it's really unfortunate. Prim as a whole really got shafted. A lot of stuff got cut out of Prim. There used to be a whole reputation system that got cut. There's really only one quest left, and that's rescuing, getting getting a new town sheriff. And if you interact with this character that I made, uh, you can do that without even setting foot in town. You can get a new, quote, sheriff. You can complete that quest uh, by failing it and doing his alternate quest to kill all potential sheriff applicants. You know, there's three possible sheriffs. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's shooting at me. I don't know who you are. Okay, this isn't the same guy. This must not be my guy. Isn't he? I feel like he is. Oh, yeah, it is my guy, but because this guy spotted me, he went hostile. That bugged a little bit. Oh, we gotta go all the way back here. That's unfortunate. It's fine. We'll just, uh, fast travel there. You tried to clear the bison, Steve, with an RPG once. Well, that is an option nowadays. Oh, God. More of these geckos. Come on! I, I should have taken the charisma animal friend perk. This is ridiculous. I need something that hits harder than that pea shooter. I gotta install mods, just like Wishman told me to! If I install mods, it'll be more powerful. Or, or maybe I'll just increase my energy weapon skill, which is kind of abysmal at the moment. I'm gonna lead them right into Prim. The NCR soldiers are not gonna know what to make, what to make of that. <laughs> not nah, here we are. All right. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, we got geckos coming. Crazy that. Don't mind me. Glad that's over. Just going into town. Hey, where the hell do you think you're I'm going, going in. Don't worry. What's going on? I can take care of it. You Thank you, Pokepop. Thank you for the sub. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. So yeah, there's probably a different mod that adds more powder gangers that's interfering with checks. Again, so many mods interacting with each other, causing issues. No, oh, I'm already in caution. That's unfortunate. If anyone spots me, I'll have to kill him with console commands because I need to get this guy to proc. Yeah, that guy's staring there. So this guy should challenge me and not immediately open fire on me. That is my hope. Hey, you. This is Powder Ganger Turf. Are you fixing to get shot? Aha, a character that's not voiced by me. So yes, his his name is Chex. I don't remember why I named him Chex. Voiced by my brother Robert. Can I get into town? Nah, see, my friends shoot strangers on sight. Strangers like you, you don't want to go in there. Trust me. Uh, but I'm a courier with the Mojave Express. Well, as the new owner of the Mojave Express, allow me to formally terminate your employment. You're fired. <laughs> I honestly can't remember why I named him Chex. I probably had a reason, but I don't remember what it is. I need information. I lost a package I was supposed to deliver. And I'm pretty sure this dialogue is different if you've already done the whole thing with Benny. Then it sounds like I did you a favor. You probably would have gotten fired for gross incompetence. A man in a checkered suit and some thugs stole it. Did they pass by? Oh, yeah. Hard to forget that ugly suit. Stood out like a sore thumb. And... And watch your tone, because those thugs were great cons. Well, which way did they go? And you can inquire about the great cons, because this is the first time the player would have heard about them. Which way did they go? I can help you find them, but only if you do a favor for me first. And I think you actually... See, my gang just took over the town. We're running a tight ship, but the town isn't happy about it. They're hoping the NCR comes by and kicks us out. Or maybe a militia forms to oppose us. I need you to destroy that hope. The audio might be a little quiet for you. Let me see if I can turn it up a little bit without, you know, deafening y'all. There we go. So I believe you do have the option of skipping his quest and just getting the information if you're maybe charismatic enough. I don't, I don't remember what the requirements were. What do you need me to do? I need you to get rid of a few folks, namely the NCR brass in town and a guy named Myers hanging out at the correctional facility. Ah, yes, so you do have the charisma here. I don't mean to brush you off, but I need to follow the trail before it gets cold. And I could say, can I pay you for the information? And I believe there is a barter check. I don't need caps. What I need is someone to do some cleaning for me. What do you say? Um, there, I, I guess there isn't a barter check. I could have sworn there was a barter check, but maybe that only appears if your barter skill is high enough. Otherwise, it isn't shown. Will the NCR really abandon this town because you killed a single officer? So you could talk about killing the NCR officer, and you could talk about killing Myers, who's at the NCRCF. And you do have the option of passing the charisma check, and he'll give you the information you need. He'll point you towards the, your next destination. But the quest will remain open if you decide you want to take it up. I suppose you're right. I'll tell you what you want, but I would still appreciate it if you could spare the time to help me. What a nice guy. So, did you see where the man in the checkered suit went? 
Yeah, they headed south to Nipton, then likely west to Novak. They were meeting up with someone there. Uh, Vargas, I think it was. All right, and the quest is still available. Ah, uh, yep, there we go. Marvelous. And also, if he, if you've already done the thing in Prim, you've already gotten on the Powder Ganger's bad side, he will, he will still walk up to you and challenge you, but his dialogue will uh, be very hostile, and he'll be like, well, if it isn't the guy who brought Law back to Prim, I think I owe you one. And then he's supposed to say more things, but I didn't get that line recorded. Sometimes it's really easy to accidentally skip over lines when you're recording dialogue, because sometimes they're nested inside of each other. Oh, there's, there's some laser fire going on in there. So just got to kill Myers and the NCR soldier over here, and that will be an alternate resolution. The, the NCR soldiers are not going to be happy, but it'll be an alternate resolution for the town of Prim. So I believe in the base game, the quest is called My Kind of Town. So here is an optional counter quest called Their Kind of Town. So passing their kind of town will basically fail my kind of town by default. And we will Run. duck inside here, kill Lieutenant Hayes. Check your Check fire. Your fire. And the person that's... Yep, Lieutenant Murder. Hayes has died. It's weird that some characters have pop-ups like that. Not all of them. This is that's the last of you. But I, oh, And I'm shunned by the NCR. You have your military orders. And I'm pretty sure that the soldiers outside are going to know what's going to... Yeah. It's, it, they're gonna know what happened, and they're gonna they're gonna come at me. What happened to Mike's brother? He's he's just on a different part of the state. Is all. Oops. I'm not sure coward. if you were gonna hit, hit me at all, but what have you done? You got a baseball bat. Get some. NCR couldn't spring for actual guns, eh? Ooh, a ah. knife. Marvelous. And Sergeant McGee has died, and now I'm hated by the NCR. Unfortunate. But the NCR will not shoot you on sight, even if you're vilified. I believe you have to get pretty far into the main quest line. Act 2, I believe, before they shoot you on sight. This guy, this guy does, though, because he basically saw me do that. Man, can, you, can, these, can, can these modded NCR soldiers stop being here? Because it's, it's kind of an issue now. Report back to the Powder Ganger or kill Myers. We'll do that part first. And I believe... Oh, we leveled up. That's nice. I'm vilified by the NCR. Yep, that's a problem. But I... Yeah, I, they're not going to let you have immediate entry because I haven't helped the Powder Gangers take over Look at you. Hey, how's it going? What is this place? Can I go in? Here's the caps. All right, yeah, you, you can still bribe him to go in. And because Myers is a different faction, you can just straight up murder him and no one else will really care. Yeah. There we go. Now we can report back. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. What is the quest reward aside from info and XP? Well, oh, I fast traveled into the town. That's okay. The, the fast travel point for Prim causes some issues. Okay, okay. Um, yep, I need to not kill checks because I need to turn in the quest. These these uh, NPCs that have been modded in are causing some interference with the NPCs I've modded in. Damn them. Once I've killed the Powder Gangers, the Powder Gangers will love me. Damn. Uh, my quest beacon has disappeared. Yep, I failed the quest. I can't report back because he's dead. Okay, let's let's not fast travel directly into the town of Prim. That causes issues. And again, it wouldn't be that much of a problem if these powder gangers were properly coded and it didn't immediately shoot people for no reason on sight. But uh, I guess that's just how they cut corners, how they got it ready for release in time. Just, just make them hostile, make them generic bad guys. Yes, we're doing some audio commentary on the old mod that I made today. If we can get to all the stops on our trip, that would be nice. But I'm running into a few issues. Need a pacifier gun. Yeah, I mean, I could use the, uh, the Groovitron. That will work to an extent. Oh, God. Go away, coyote. Go away, not coyote. Has the NCR forgotten that I killed uh, their commanding officers here? Are they still going to be angry if I start walking up to them? Okay, yeah. They forgot. They forgot. That's good. You thought it was a dog. It was a, it was a man walking around on all fours. What a weirdo. F5. And now we'll try to turn the quest in. Okay. Nope. Nope. There's a caravan in the town of Prim right now. <laughs> so many mods interfering with each other. We'll wait for things to calm down. Okay. It's, it seems to be... It, you guys didn't kill my quest giver. Okay. They didn't kill my quest giver. Hello. I'm back. Oh, wait. I, I can pickpocket a firebomb. No. Let's, let's talk. Hey. Hey. 
So, I've done as you've asked. Excellent. Thanks to your efforts and my friend shooting out that sheriff robot, ain't nobody gonna challenge us. He kills the third option for a sheriff in town. Prim Slim has died. Now there can be no sheriffs in town, and the Powder Gangers have control. I should go. Powder Gangers rule. We're the Powder Gangers. That's us. And we rule. Yeah. Well done, Rob. Yep. Yep, we, uh, we had to kill Sheriff Prim Slim. Never became Sheriff. Died before it even had the opportunity. Why does he have a BB gun? Eh, some characters around here just spawn with whatever's in the level list. They are marked very aggressive. You can assign them aggressive and be part of the Powder Gangers faction. Yes, and some other mods do take that approach, which might be the better way of doing things. I, I think my intentions with checks there were good, but as we can see, it, it isn't perfect. There are issues. It can be done, and it does give you an optional way to resolve the quest in Prim, but it's not the most elegant way to do things. You say checks also respawns. Probably shouldn't have checked that checkbox. Checks probably should not respawn. Yeah, Rob did really well. Okay, moving on to the next character who is at the Mojave Outpost. I believe, I believe that's the next closest one. I am vilified, but again, you can be vilified and still not shot on sight by the NCR. It's fine, so. Turn my back for one minute. Here's the character voiced by me. And it was my favorite one, too. Programmed to stand there muttering to himself, a couple different barks. I hate this goddamn place. No respect for personal property. And you can talk to him, get a quest from him. What? What do you want? Mm, sorry, sorry. I'm not in a good mood right now. What's wrong, you can inquire? Some of my playing cards were stolen, some really important ones. It's gonna be difficult to win a game of Caravan without them. So there we go. An introduction to the game of Caravan, which so many players have told me that they, they'd never never played it. They Maybe they played it once and they never figured out how to play it properly and they've got one or two achievements left to do for New Vegas and they all revolve around Caravan and they never learned and they never tried. Um, and the game doesn't really give you a good guide. I remember the first time that I played Fallout New Vegas, and I talked to Ringo, and he said, you want to play a game of Caravan? And I said, uh, okay. And I didn't understand how to play, and he just took my caps. He's like, thanks for the game. And uh, I shot him, and I, I failed good Ghost Town Gunfight, because fuck you, Ringo. How dare you? This guy is a little bit of a dick. A little bit. He, he's grumpy. He's grumpy. Whoa, people actually play Caravan? We have to do something around here to pass the time, and we're limited on options. We throw rocks at tin cans, complain about the weather, and play caravan. That's it. Why not play other card games like poker, go fish, or euchre? I've never even heard of that last one. Pretty sure you made it up. <laughs> Look, we can't play proper card games because nobody around here has a full deck. Do you have any idea how hard it is to get all 52 cards out here? And even when we do get a complete set, it doesn't last long as people inevitably steal the best cards for their caravan deck. You have no idea what Euchre is? It's kind of a Rust Belt thing. I played it a few times when I was in the military. You know, we had some downtime. Back in that story where uh, we were in Africa, and that guy was running around naked, cutting into tents, going, Mike, where are you? Yeah, the card game I was playing with my fellow Marines was Euchre, because that's all you really did to pass time. You just played cards. And the card game that we tended to play was Euchre. Maybe you just misplaced them. No, only the important cards are missing. I still have all my crappy number cards, but you better believe I'm short a few kings. The NCR has an established production industry. Can't they make a new deck of cards? It's not high on their priority list. I'll keep an eye out for them. And, and again, like PFC Gray says, every time they get a new deck of cards in, it's immediately rat-fucked and all the cards are scattered. So, no, they, can't, they cannot keep a proper deck on hand. Thanks, but they didn't have any distinguishing markings, so you wouldn't be able to tell them from any other playing cards. I'll just have to buy some replacements from the traveling merchants. See you around. And we have a new quest from PFC Gray. And uh, I'm really proud of the title of this one. I thought it was really, really clever. Thief of Kings instead of King of Thieves. Um, but this quest does not have a waypoint, which I believe is a problem. Uh, I, I don't agree with my own de design philosophy. I think if you're going to have a named quest like this, 
it should definitely have some kind of direction or if not a speci- if, if not a direct waypoint a bit more guidance than ask around because i've seen people struggle with figuring out how this one works it should if it's going to be a named quest you got to have more direction or just let it be an unnamed quest and honestly it, pr- it probably should be an unnamed quest but yeah this quest is to teach the player about how to play caravan in a very very basic way when i was going for the achievements for this game i also did not know how to play caravan so the strategy i was told did work it gets you pretty far you got to get uh, three or four different card types the sixes the nines the kings and the jacks and that's all you got to grab just make a deck full of that and it'll get you pretty far that was my go-to strategy for a long time and then i played episode uh, back in episode 250 on the channel the caravan tournament where the uh, opponents got progressively harder and it took me all the way to the semifinals but in the um, in the very last versus round in the final round the final opponent was really difficult and that simple strategy was not enough i actually had to learn how to play caravan a bit more intricately it had to get a bit more invested in the strategy had to throw some sevens and eights and stuff in there as well but uh generally this strategy will get you pretty far if you're playing against the vanilla characters in the game a very basic deck will get you through most interactions so there's another modded character that i made related to a different quest and so when people get that quest and they find this character I've seen them try to talk to them and be like, why aren't you, you're obviously the person I got to talk to to progress this quest. Why aren't you talking to me? And they think it's bugged or something. But again, that's, that's a problem that stems from me not giving the player enough direction for a named quest. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll come back and talk to that guy for the other quest, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to have him redirect you, like tell you exactly where you got to go. Oh yeah. There's that jerk bag always hiding over there. That's where he is. Let me mark it on your pit boy. I know exactly where he is. Something like that. Some kind of direction. Um, and you can get these stolen cards back from this guy and uh, provided you you pass the checks. Hey, don't sneak up on a guy like that, asshole. Oh, why so jumpy? Why so many questions? What do you want? And because the quest is active, we can say, I'm looking for some missing playing cards. And you're accusing me of stealing them. Is that it? No, you seem like an honest person. Well, you are acting suspicious. You never met me before. How do you know this isn't my normal behavior? And both options will take you here. There is a speech option and a barter option. Again, their success is hidden. Uh, we can try to shame him. You should feel ashamed of yourself for stealing. I didn't steal shit, and you can't prove it. Besides, there's just one thief in the NCR, and everybody else is just trying to get their shit back. That's a very common quote in the military. There's only one thief in the Marine Corps, and everyone else is just trying to get their shit back. How about a barter option? I will pay you one million caps for those stolen cards. Do I look like an idiot? Get, get out of here. Goodbye. Yeah, 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 whatever. So, do not have enough to pass the speech check or the barter check. I believe you can pickpocket. That is an option, provided you're stealthy enough, which we are not. Yeah, the stolen cards are in his pocket but I don't know if I'm going to have the skills to loot them out of his... Especially not with you watching me. I could also straight up murder him and take the cards off his corpse. That's an option as well. Let's see. Uh, there's no... Yeah, I'm just going to give myself the console command for it. 50, sure, why not? What, what? I'm busy here. How much are those stolen cards worth to you? That depends. How much you got? Am I using Nevada Arsenal? I'm using some... I'm using so many mods I couldn't even tell you what's doing what. It might be uh, another millennia giving them a bunch of weapons. Aha! So you did steal them! No, I didn't. You you said I... Shit. Look, I only took the sixes and, and a few kings. That's all. With these cards, I'll be unstoppable. What do you mean by that? And he will tell you his strategy. Look, you can put whatever cards you want in your caravan deck. So I'm loading mine down with sixes and tens. It's an unbeatable strategy. Again, it does work. And you could ask him more... How so? And he'll go on a rant about how queens are useless. Never fucking use queens. It's pretty fun, I thought. The gold. A king. He'll tell you about the jacks. What about queens? Queens are fucking garbage. Absolutely useless. Never use them. I'm telling you, load your deck with those four cards. Tens, sixes, kings, and jacks. It works 100% of the time. Every time. Give me back those stolen cards or I'll tell everyone about your strategy. All right, all right. Take them. Just 
Keep this between you and me, okay? And then you could challenge uh, him to a card game as well. What? Could you repeat your caravan strategy? Make each caravan stack with a six, a ten, and a king. Boom. Where would you like to play some caravan? Hell no! You know my strategy now, and you'd probably use it against me. You would pull some kind of shit like that, wouldn't you? That's what I'd do. I don't even know if Ringo gave me a deck, so I don't know if I can play Caravan with anyone properly. But uh, we do have the stolen cards now, and we have the option, there's multiple endings to this quest, we can turn them into PFC over here, or we can keep them for ourselves. If you turn them in, and he'll be like, oh, thanks, man, he'll give you a quest experience, and he'll, let, he'll give you an ace of spades. Your ace is in my book. That's, it's got a, a nice way to resolve that. But if you want to be unscrupulous, if you want to take the cards for yourself, that is an option. What? I couldn't find your stolen cards. Add them to your deck. Eh, Caravan is a stupid game anyway. Can't believe anyone takes it too seriously. Thanks for looking, though. See you around. And then three six of clubs are added to your deck, and three king of clubs. There you go. There is a bit of a problem. I didn't script that properly. Because it adds the exact same kind of card, it basically only counts as one. So I tried to add six cards into the player's inventory, but I really only added two. Go quiet. The Which, uh, yeah, just chalk it up to the fact that I didn't understand how the caravan cards worked from a scripting perspective. But uh, yeah, I should have added a couple different varieties of those cards and not three of the same because three, you, you can only have one of each specific kind of card in your deck. You could have several different sixes of clubs, but they have to be from different casinos. And I gave the player the same card from the same casino, so didn't count. But uh, yeah, that was that quest. Wasn't too bad, I thought. I thought it was a pretty good quest. Making tiny model tanks while listening to Mike, well, listening to me talk to Zach. What a Monday night. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what is next? Ah, Nellis Air Force Base. That's, that's, I think this was uh, one of my best works. It was a bit difficult from a, a scripting perspective, but I'm glad it worked the way it did. Hold on, let me go and talk to the guards at the front gate of Nellis Air Force so I don't completely screw things up as they are... You know what? I'll just... Player dot set AV speed malt uh, 150. Okay, now move around a little faster. Good, good. That'll save us a bit of time. Here you go, Mike. More bits, because no one can stop me. Hey, thank you, Venezuelan. Very kind of you. Welcome back. Thank you very much. And you asked, what did you miss? Not too much. I mean, you can go back and uh, I'll, I'll release this video on the, the second channel anyway. But uh, we're just going through the quests that I made, the NPCs and stuff like that, and talking about what I learned while I was developing this mod, how I feel about some of these quests now that it's been a, a year since I made them and I've seen other people enjoy them. Some quests I'm quite proud of. Some definitely needed a bit more time in the oven. So let me trigger these guys and get taken to the boss. It's been way more than a year since I made this mod. Again, time dilation. Who knows when I made what anymore? Actually, you're probably right. I probably did this. I probably finished this mod before we even started with the frontier. It's been a while. Where is... So there, there are two NPCs in this area, both related to one quest. I don't remember where Hello. they are exactly, but once I start the quest, I'll be directed towards them, so it'll be fine. I made the frontier. Did I say I made the frontier? I made the frontier videos on the channel. That's that's what I meant to say, I, I suppose. Now that I know what I've done wrong, I can make a better version. Yeah, all I gotta do is have more time, which, as we've seen, it's very elusive. Time seems to be a weird manifestation. Uh, is it the munitions hall, I believe? Okay, so there's Hello. a character. There we are. Update on the battle with New Vegas. Some ground gained. Still a lot to go. I wish you nothing but success with that. I really do. It's not always easy, but I have faith you'll be able to get it going. Uh, so the character I need to talk to is somewhere around here, I believe. I believe. Oh, there she is. You're the outsider. I hear you're here to help. Do you have a moment to help me? Who are you? My name is Emma. I'm the teacher's aide. Not that she ever needs my help. Have you met her yet? Sorry for the bit spam. Oh, you don't, no need to apologize for that. Thank you very much. Glad to have you here. So there is a school teacher in the Nellis airfield, and uh, you can talk to her. Uh, this doesn't really check if you have. You can lie to her if you want. No, I haven't. I haven't. Or yeah, I have. 
I bet you could teach her some really cool things from the outside world. I'm sure you've heard by now. We don't get out much. Uh, so we could ask about the children. They're angels. Not a single rotten kernel on the whole cob. Do you like kids? And you can say Charisma 7 almost as much as they like me. Because this is actually one of the few vanilla charisma interactions. When you have high charisma in Fallout New Vegas, there's not much you can do with it. But one of the very few things you can do is make friends with the children here at uh, Nellis Air Force Base. So if you have Charisma 7, you can say, yeah. You should go play with them. Teach them that outsiders can be good people. And if you show them toys from the outside world, they'll never forget it. There you go. Pointing you to an unmarked interaction you can have with the Boomer Kids. And here's the actual proper quest you can ask about. It's not serious, but it is a bit personal. I think there's been a peeping Tom leering into the women's barracks. Most of the windows are too smudged to see through, but I swear I saw somebody spying on me last night. Somebody was there. They cleaned a section of the window large enough to use as a peephole and fell in the dirt when they fled, leaving a trail. The tracks led to the men's barracks, and it looks like the culprit fell over a few times, like they tripped over themselves in a rush to escape. I don't want to worry the other women unduly or make a scene, but I can't ignore it either. Can you look into this for me? And we will inquire a bit further. Is this NPC voiced by Anne? It is not. I made this... Um, before Anne and I even met, this character is actually voiced by, at the time, Zack's girlfriend, who you may now know as Zack's wife. So if you go back and compare the voices between the video that Zack put out on his channel a few days ago, where uh, she introduced herself, you can hear the similarities because it's the same person. So you want me to go where you can't. Yes. The rules say women aren't allowed in the men's barracks, but you're not a woman, so there's no problem. And of course, she has different dialogue there if you're a woman. She makes up a different reason why you can go in, but she can't. I can't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head, but there's a, there's a plausible reason why you can do it and she can't. What am I looking for? I'm not sure. Maybe a pair of pants that look like they were dirtied and torn recently? Or a dirty cloth used to clean the window? Honestly, I don't even know if there's any evidence to find. But I'd appreciate you checking it out, just in case. I will look into this for you, sure. I, I mean, I'm too busy for this right now. I understand. But if you happen to stumble upon something suspicious, please let me know. Now, I can't remember if that automatically adds the quest anyway. Yeah, it does add the quest anyway. Yep. Morning. Voyeur eyes only. Again, I'm, I'm very proud of the title. <laughs> that was pretty good. Investigate Emma's peeping town. Peeping Tom, so... Now we go over to the women's barracks and poke around, which, uh, is the waypoint active? Hold on. The waypoint is not active. Uh, again, that's kind of unfortunate. I definitely should have a waypoint pointing towards the women's barracks at this point, because this is a, kind of a big location, this whole area. Hard to find the women's barracks if you don't know your way around. Right here? Yeah, that's the Nellis women's barracks. I think I, I need to go in the men's barracks to investigate. I'm pretty sure. Hear things exploding out there. Not sure what that is. Hello. Hello. So here we are in the men's barracks, and unfortunately, everything is marked as stealing here, which might cause some issues. Um, basically, the way New Vegas works is the cell is marked as being an owned cell. So basically, everything in here is marked as owned, and as far as I can tell, there's no way to get around that. I would have liked to add some things here that weren't tied to anyone else's ownership, but I really couldn't figure out a way to do that. But yeah, the item I'm looking for is right here, Larry's Journal. And so now that we got some new options here, you can read the, the journal right here. I stay afar, I do abstain, but see your beauty through the pain. You can see his bad poetry, very bad poetry. The poem continues being bad for several stanzas. It frequently mentions Emma's name. So now we can confront the boomer poet or report back to Emma. And you can cut this quest early. You can report back to Emma, say, hey, I found the culprit, it's this guy, and she gives you a reward, and that's the end of the quest. But there is a different way to go through it, and a more interesting way to do it, if you uh, confront the poet directly. Okay, so confront the, okay, now we got waypoints. It'll tell us exactly where we need to go, which I believe over here is where the culprit is. Does the karma system do anything in New Vegas? Because you've never seen it do much except you're in, in level... Th it does do a few things here and there. I, I It's not made... It's not not a whole lot of... The vanilla game doesn't make use of it all that often. I've seen it used more in the 
some of the mods that I've played, and there are some perks, I believe, that require specific karma levels. But no, your karma level it really doesn't matter too much, which Hello. honestly, it's how I prefer it. I think the karma system was very archaic. It was bad even in Fallout 3, so I'm glad it was kind of... It was basically rendered obsolete in New Vegas and didn't continue on. F5. And we talked to... Oh, what's up, Outsider? It's Zek doing a, doing a voice. I found your poetry. I found your shitty poetry. And we can say, who are you? We can talk, and we talk to him and ask who he is. Name's Larry. I operate the biodiesel refinery around here. Tough work for a tough man like me. Tell me about the biodiesel refinery. You can ask about that. And we can ask about uh, the shitty poetry. Confront him with the evidence we've found. It's not shitty. I mean, uh, it's not mine. Uh, uh, okay, fine. Yes, it's mine. And I know it's bad. What's it to you? <laughs> Zach doing an impression of that one Simpsons character. The, the pimply, t the zit face teen. Yeah, this guy is a dork. Do you think Emma would like to see this? You've been peeping on Emma. Admit it. It's not peeping. It's long distance admiration. That's a fancy way to describe peeping. It's not... It's not something I normally do. Start talking. Look, I've been observing Emma from afar. She's beautiful and caring and mature and amazing. And I want her in my life. Last night, I finally decided to stop being a damn coward and tell her how I feel. I went to the women's barracks and I was gonna knock on the door. But then I got worried she wouldn't be there. What if somebody else answered the door and I had to explain why I was knocking? And then they tell her that creepy Larry was looking for her. And it ruins everything because now she thinks I'm creepy. And we can let him continue, but I've heard enough. Please, I'm not normally a weirdo. Don't tell her it was me, please. So, we could use perception. Your poem mentioned a pain. This isn't the first time you've watched her, is it? No, it's, it's not. But it's the first time I saw her like that. It caught me off guard, and I let out a gasp yell thing. Some weird noise I can't recreate. It was kind of like a... That's what alerted her to my presence, I think. I'm going to turn you in. You should apologize to her, or this can't happen again. So a, a couple different ways to approach this particular conversation, but uh, these three options basically lead into the exact same next step of the quest, where he, he gives you a briefing on what he'd like to get out of the vault so that he can go talk to Emma. The things that give him the confidence. I'm going to turn you in. No, you'd be ruining my life. Please hear me out. I can make everything right again. Okay, I'm listening. I'm going to become the most charismatic man in the world. If you help me become sophisticated and suave, I'll confess my love to Emma in front of everyone else without fear. What do you say? And there is a charisma option that doesn't do much of anything. But if you have high charisma, you can at least say, I know a thing or two about charming people. I can help you out. You've got charisma oozing out the pores. I can tell. But not all of us are as naturally captivating as you are. Especially with a voice like this. What I need more than anything right now is my parents' clothing. This is a very cool, it's nice to see people still passionate about New Vegas. Yeah, it's a very active modding community over a decade later. I'm still looking to make some more myself, but it is time consuming sometimes. Yeah, I'm not sure I follow, Larry. I never met my parents, but the others have told me stories about them and how madly in love they were. One story in particular stands out to me. Apparently, they each owned an article of clothing that would drive one another into a frenzy of lustful passion. Like casting a spell, almost. If the clothes make the man, I want these clothes to make me. Unfortunately, they're still somewhere in our ancestral vault, and I can't leave. But you can move freely, so you can bring me those clothes. Once I have them, I promise I'll talk to Emma. And of course, that is indeed where the boomers come from. They came from a vault that... You can go to in-game. There's not much of a connection. I think you can talk to the small child and he gives you the briefing on the boomers. We came from this vault. Vault, whatever number it is. I can't remember what number it is. We come from this vault. And you can go visit that vault. And there's not really any actual connection. So this is kind of my way of 
making there be a connection. So there, we've got a reason to go back to what is actually their ancestral vault. And we could use Barter to, uh, to extort a bit more money out of him. I'll help you if you sweeten the deal. Or we can say, I look forward to seeing if this actually works. Or, this plan is stupid, but okay. I'll show you. Once I have my special clothing, I'll be an unstoppable god of charm and persuasion. You say the updated note on Mike's mod site written last February says it disabled all hit three hit squads. Yeah, again, that was the thing I got the most negative feedback on is the hit squads. They were really difficult for low-level characters, and they weren't programmed very well, and they kind of showed up at weird times, and I just disabled them. It was easier just to disable them. But it's okay. You thought there were only two hit squads in CR and Legion? Yeah, I added the Powdery Ganger hit squad, the Great Khan hit squad, and the, uh, the, the Brotherhood of Steel hit squad. And uh, due to negative feedback, I ended up cutting those from the more recent release. And yes, that is Zack voicing that character. That is in indeed Zack doing this kind of voice. So now we are tasked with getting Larry's mother's clothing and getting Larry's father's clothing. But it is still possible to report back to Emma. I did add quite a few different ways to, to get this quest completed. So if you go grab Larry's and... If you go grab the clothing that Larry asks you to get, you can still, even after getting the, those pieces of clothing, go report back into Emma, and you, you've got to code in for that kind of contingency. you, you got to make sure it's removing those quest items from your inventory, because it's always kind of frustrating with when mods leave their quest items in your inventory and forget to remove them, or because you've taken a path they didn't predict. So I, I work very hard on this one to make sure that no matter at what point you jumped off on, it wasn't leaving garbage in your inventory. I worked very hard on that. More than most people would realize. But yes, to the vault, which is down here, Vault 34. Get past some geckos. I probably should have uh, brought like a companion. You know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> should have brought a companion, made things go a little easier. Ow, I'm just gonna duck in here, don't mind me. The Vault of Cancer, Vault 34, yes. So, Vault 34 is a very frustrating vault in the vanilla game. Oh boy. And I believe that's largely due to the fact that there are multiple different floors, and uh, you can never tell what floor you need to be on. It tells The waypoints tell you where you need to go, but it doesn't tell you what floor you need to be on, so you, you're kind of confused, wondering what's going on. I'm in the area it's telling me to be in, but uh, you don't realize you're not on the right floor. I currently have a mod on that tells you that if the waypoint is above you or below you, which is a very nice quality of life change, but in the vanilla game, that isn't there, and it's very unfortunate. Um, again, I don't know if any of these perks are used. I don't think they are in my mod, so we'll grab Educated. So now we are going into the Vault, vault 34. Geckos, ghouls. Lots of enemies to kill here. Funnel them in. Just shoot them as they come up here. Just gonna spam stim packs while I'm shooting these guys. I gotta clear them out. The gun I'm using is energy based or gun is based. It's probably based on energy weapons, so I probably should stop putting points into guns, right? That would make sense. I'm just not thinking too hard about it, I suppose. There you go. Now it should go. Now we should be able to go through a little bit faster because I set my energy weapon skill to 100. Okay, so the waypoint says right here. This locker is something that I added. I didn't put the item in the locker. I added, whoop. I added that locker that has the items in it. There we go. So grab Larry's mother's dress and you cannot put it on because if, I, I tried to make it actual clothing you could wear, but because uh, a male character can't actually put on a dress, it would just become a suit when you put it on. Uh, I decided nah, we'll just make it an unwearable quest item. And so that's what it is. So we have Larry's mother's dress, but you cannot wear it. Now to get the other article of clothing. I believe the clothing is down this hallway. Yes, down here maybe. We'll find it, we'll find it. Eventually we'll find it. Okay, yeah, here we are. Hold on. One last one to kill. So here is where Larry's father's hat is. And we'll grab that. And now we can take both of these items back to Larry, and that will give him the, the uh, confidence he needs to confess his love to Emma. It'll probably just be faster to get out of here if I do move to QT. We'll do, do that. I'm just running that railgun into the ground. You know it. Um, so we'll do F5 right here, and we can just go ahead and say, hey. Have you found anything yet, outsider? Yeah, about that peeping Tom. 
Yes, what did you find? I can show the note. I know the culprit's a bad poet. It's Larry. He's crazy in love with you. Larry is the peeping Tom. He's trying to win your heart. And of course, if you choose any of these options, this option becomes apparent if you find the, the, the poetry. And uh, these options, I believe, become available if you've already confronted him and he's told you what his plan is. Um, but yeah, you could basically just bail on the quest right now if you wanted to. Larry's in love with you. I've seen him hanging out near the schoolhouse from time to time. He was actually starting to worry me. So it was me he was stalking after all, huh? I'll have to take him aside and put a stop to it. Thanks for solving the mystery for me. I'll put in a good word for you around here. Yeah. And if you choose to do it that way, you get some boomers fame, which does tie into the overall big boomers uh, quest. Okay, that removes your items there because you picked them up. Yep. So yeah, warrior eyes only was completed in a relatively simple way. Didn't even have to go all the way and grab, grab those items. Uh, and then Larry, of course, will not be happy, and you won't get his scene and his reward, but you will get Boomer fame. So if you do it the other way, you will get a positive reputation with Larry, but you won't get the Boomer fame, I don't think. But that is an, another way to get some Boomer fame if you're hurting for the requirements for that for the main the main game. The Larry ending is interesting, though. I thought so. Got to remember where I where is he? Ah, yeah. Just follow the waypoint. Follow the waypoint. So yeah, here we are. And we are back with Larry. My plan will work. Trust me. I will give you your father's hat. Oh, look at that purple feather. So cool. I can see why this thing is so appealing. Nicely done. And we can give you the dress that we found. I have your mother's dress. Her dress? I didn't know it was a dress they were talking about. I can't wear a dress to confess my love to Emma. Then again... If the stories about her clothes being magic are really true, I guess I can't afford not to wear it. Yep, there we go. Come here, thanks. All right. So, yeah, a bit tricky to make this happen because I wanted to have a fun scene where Larry puts on a dress, but because in Fallout New Vegas, male characters are not able to wear dresses. If they try to equip a dress, it becomes a suit. Uh, there are some mods out there to allow male characters to wear dresses, but I couldn't figure out how to make that work for my mod, so I did a, 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 a makeshift solution. Are you ready to go talk to Emma? Yes, I am. Thank you for all your help, friend. Tonight, I've got a date with an angel. He's got that charisma. He's got the charisma from the hat and the dress. He's got the confidence. Don't you see, Larry? The confidence wasn't in the clothes. The confidence was in you all along. Yeah, the solution was to uh, make Larry the female body type. Which you may have noticed earlier, very subtly, hey. he was using the female animations because there's no way to disconnect those from the female body type. And making them talk to each other... Uh, excuse me? ...was a little tricky, but I made it work. Hello, Emma. Larry? Is that... Are you wearing a dress? Yes, Emma. Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Not many men would be bold enough to walk around like that. I admire your confidence. As I admire you, you are a woman of not just grace and beauty, but of compassion and joy. You inspire me. I've never seen this side of you before, Larry. So confident, so unrestrained. I'll no longer languish in the shadows. This is who I am. You know, the children need a role model like you. Somebody who stands up and says, I'm proud to be different. Yeah, it's Vera's dress. The children already have you. My question to you is, who do you have? From Dead Money. Let's see. I think we should spend some time together. Now, she is programmed... I'd like that. ...to follow Larry. Ah, uh, but... See, the thing is, her programming changed, but because I'm missing a line of code to uh, reevaluate her package, she doesn't immediately start following him. I think if you do leave and come back, she will follow him, but because I forgot the evaluate AI package code, that, that line of code there to make her change her AI, uh, yeah, so there we go. See, she, she does change her AI package, but she doesn't do it immediately because I missed that line of code. My mistake. She got a P250. Yes, <laughs> modded weapons. Yep, modded weapons. Thank you, friend. Without you, I never would have found the confidence to be myself. And I think you can talk to him a couple times. Thanks again, friend. Yeah, he's got a couple different lines. That's it. Hey, it's you. 
Don't worry about investigating that creeper anymore. Larry told me it's all taken care of. Isn't that great? Yeah. He also mentioned that you really helped out with a personal issue he had. That's wonderful. Thank you. So, honestly, probably not great that I'm starting this relationship Morning. off for them based on, a, honestly, a kind of a lie. You. you know, got like, kind of a secret, you know. A big surprise! I was the one who was the peeping Tom! It was a big misunderstanding! And maybe six months from now he'll tell her the truth and I'll have a big old laugh about it. I don't know, but that was that quest, and honestly, kind of fun. It was wacky and silly. Nice day we're having. But I was happy with the outcome. I thought I did pretty nice good work day on that. We're the voicing was pretty fun. Nice it was just, day it's just we're a fun, fun little quest. Larry had the balls to walk around in a dress. If Larry can do it, you can too. Yep. So where do we go next? What other quests do we have access to? Well. Um, there aren't very many quests, but there are a few more characters we can go talk to. So, down in Prim. I know we were in Prim earlier, but I forgot there is another character I added to the city of Prim. So, we'll go on in. And any powder gangers that attack us will have to be shot, unfortunately. But that's just how it's gonna happen. Okay, so inside... The casino here, the Vicky and Vance Casino. I don't know what it was brought you to Prim, youngster, but you might want to rethink your plans. Thank you, Jonathan Nash. Goodbye. So one thing that I do believe every single town should have uh, is a vendor and a doctor, especially if you're trying to make a survival mode happen, because the game does give you an option of doing a survival mode run where you got to eat and drink and rest and stuff like that. And I think if you're going to have that kind of mode, then you probably should have a doctor in every settlement. And uh, some settlements are just missing a doctor or missing a vendor. This, a very crucial cornerstone of the town. So I added a doctor to the town of Prim. Granted, it's a bit of a joke, doctor. Sure enough, Prim Slim here is dead. That powder gang was true to his word. But here is the town doctor. Hey, do you need medical attention? Voiced by me again. Hey, you can't be a doctor. You're just a kid. True, but I'm also a genius. If you have a problem with that, I can get you a car dealer who's not as smart as me. How did you become the town's doctor? I used to watch Mrs. McBain heal people before the powder gangers killed her. She let me bandage cuts, clean tools, stuff like that. The sheriff's wife before she died. Everyone else is either too stupid to learn, too drunk to focus, or too old to hold a scalpel steady. And uh, this, his name is Dougie. A very, is a reference to a very well-known TV show from, I believe, the 80s called Doogie Howser, M.D., I believe. It was, it was before my time. I never saw it, but that's what this character is a reference to. I'm, I'm referencing a character I've never actually seen. He's a young doctor, so I called him Dougie. I am hurt. I need help, Doc. Oh, you get a little boo-boo on the elbow? Suck it up. Oh, but I don't have 50 caps. That's a bummer. Stop bothering me, you jerk. If one more adult asks me to cure their gambling addiction, I might start breaking fingers. Can you heal my radiation? I'll do it for 100 caps. Also, you have to bark like a dog. But I still don't have any caps. That's fine. Whoever heard of a radioactive dog, anyway? All right, goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> yep. Kissed my first girl, lost my first patient. Life will never be the same again. All right, goodbye. So yeah, just a little uh, new town doctor. Added a town doctor here. So there, is, there isn't a medic in the Mojave outpost, though. It's kind of a bummer that uh, that also does not have a doctor. But I did see a different mod that adds a few things to the Mojave outpost, including a doctor. So I didn't uh, retread old ground. I think I put on the mod page that I recommend that you install that mod as well because it will put a doctor at the Mojave outpost. But that was Doogie, or Dougie. In Prim. Bitter Springs. Oh, well. Small minor character interaction if you have the Wild Wasteland perk. We can go to Bitter Springs. Oh, fast. We got enemies nearby. Hold on. I'll have to give myself the Wild Wasteland perk too because I'm not sure I picked that at the character creation screen. Okay, now we have the Wild Wasteland perk. There we go. So now we should be able to find some of those wacky interactions. Yep, gonna ignore that. That's not, that's my, not my battle. Not my battle. So yeah, a very minor interaction over here at, where is it? Bitter Springs. Okay, let's see if we can trigger this character interaction. I don't remember exactly where I put it, and I don't think I've seen anyone else trigger it, but there is an interaction I added here. I think it's up ahead. Yeah, this guy. I think it's this guy up ahead. Hello, sir. Hey, stranger. I only have one 
Very important question. You got a smoke? If I give you some caps, can you buy your own? Nope, sorry. Get out of here, bum, and you can punch him. Little rough, don't you think? Mm, that's the end of that. <laughs> Ooh. And, uh... I, I, I'm, sure it, I'm sure a lot of people get that reference. It's, it's referencing a very popular video game. I'm sure, I'm sure Morning. someone knows it. So there is a secret option. <laughs> this interaction is already so tucked away, but if you have gum, player.add item, gum drops, I believe. Hey, how's it going? Hey, stranger. I only have one very important question. You got any... You got a smoke? You got a smoke? No, I don't have that option. If I give you some caps, can you buy your own? No, there aren't any stores around here. It's rare to even see a caravan pass by these days. Uh, nope. Hey Mike, random question. How are you doing with your Spanish? No te has oxidado verdad? Uh, no, I haven't forgotten the truth. Or whatever oxidado means. I'm not great. Mi español es mal. No es muy bien. Uh, hasta muchos años que lo estudia la lengua. Uh, something like that. Yeah. So I remember some, I can do a, a couple, I can, it's very rudimentary. I can bash my way through the language like a chainsaw. The chainsaws bash? They do when I'm using it. Yes, sir, Khan, congratulations. You're, you're the one who guessed it. It's a, it's a Resident Evil 4 reference. Bummer. Oh, it's just regular bubble gum, I think. So it's like that one. So not gum drops, but bubble gum. I believe if you have bubble gum in your pocket, you have an option for a, a new dialogue with him. Hey, stranger. I only have one very important question. Oxidado means rusty. Oh, like oxidized. Got a smoke? That makes a lot of sense. Got gum. Yeah, close enough. Probably better for me anyway. Beggar Thanks. Luis. There you go, Beggar Luis. And that's all that interaction is. Just tucked away here. Hardly anyone would ever find it. You'd have to come here with the mod active and um, have gum in your pocket and have the wild wasteland perk. No one, no one would even know it's there. But, you know, I guess, I guess it's just a little fun thing for me. Um, the strip. We can go to the strip. Sure, there's some, someone in the strip. You remember recently finding that randomly. Side. Hello, thanks for the advice. Hold on. Player.add item F. Give myself a bunch of caps. Hey, give myself a bunch of caps, please. He's going to get shot. Uh, there we go. We got plenty of caps now. You have entered the restricted area. Exterminate. Exterminate. Okay, that guy is dead. Can I go into the strip now? Submit to a credit check. Credit check. Uh, robot, let me pass. That's not going to work. Credit check. All right, now we can go into the strip. I don't remember if I... I do have somebody out here in uh, Freeside. I'll come back out and show you them. Again, another Wild Wasteland interaction. And here we are onto the Marvelous Strip. Howdy, partner! Hello, Victor. Goodbye. Who are you? I haven't talked to you. I skipped over everything That's in the tutorial. I can barely see the street. Uh, there is a character in the Gamora. Hey, no one but Omega. Yep, keep my holdout weapons and come on in. A patron of the Gamora back here in Joanna's area. Hello, Joanna. Well, what do we have here, huh? <laughs> Let me guess. Yes, yes. I'll I uh, I'll talk to you later. I'll see you soon. I Don't know what mod adds that outfit, but what an outfit that is. So yeah, there's a character I added back here. I had a bit too much fun with this guy. He's got like 30 different voice lines. Put one foot in front of the other, and soon I'll be drooling and want more. Unfortunately, his voice lines are a little too quiet. I could have worked on that a bit more, but honestly, I just kind of made this guy in like a couple hours as a fun little joke. Didn't really put a whole lot of effort into him. Could have refined him a bit more, but he is just kind of a joke character. The best part of a woman is her soul. The heel is a close second, though. So he does Patrolling have... Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winner. When you talk to him, he's got a set of barks, but he's got a completely different set of barks when he starts randomly talking to people. So if I can get him... To start talking to folks, you'll Don't hear him say some any guns completely different lines. Hello. If he barks at you, I think he says different things. Around the mobsters, I tend to tread lightly. I hope their women don't do the same. Yeah, he's a, he's a foot fetishist. It's the, that's the punchline. I'd rather be under six feet than be six feet under. 
Oh. Again, had way too much fun with him, gave him way too many Don't lines. Be carrying any guns into the casino. I was going to ask one of these ladies on a date, but then I got cold feet. Nothing but foot puns! Ah, uh, good time. And I believe that's all I did in the Gamora, or any of the casinos for that matter. I don't think I added any other characters in the casinos. But there is at least one more character on the strip I remember. Hey there, friend. Hey, hello, Mid Mr. Holdout. I mean, Mr. Bush. Goodbye. Don't hey. mind me. So there's Adam Benson from the Bees Mod. Bees, bees, bees for sale. But that's Turn away a, from this rotten way of living, that's or the, choose to stay blind yep. to the truth. That character but is from the Crossroads to face mod. The harrowing consequences. He telepathically communicates the message he's speaking into your brain, no matter how far away you are. Michael Angelos. Michael Angelos is a location that not everyone visits. It's tucked away way back here, you know, near the circus. The so there is an unmarked quest in here from the vanilla game that many people don't know about, where you get a camera from him and start taking pictures of things around the Mojave. But uh, I added another character into this area. If you go down, you can see we've got an old man here working on a uh, one of them, one of them robots, one of those Mr. House robots. And uh, you can get a camera in New Vegas. Oh yeah, you didn't know about that? You talked to Michelangelo over here. This is a vanilla interaction. I think he's tucked away. Yeah, here he is. Hey, Michelangelo. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Michelangelo. Uh, I'm, yep. Uh, why so jittery about Mr. House? What's your story? Living here. Tell me about Vault. Do you know Doc Mitchell? I know Doc Mitchell. Okay. Oh, what do you want? What's your story? Come on. How do, we, how do you get this? Oh, what do you want? Oh, what do you want? How do you get this guy's quest? Tell me about Vault 21. Okay, yep. Yeah. You seem to dread hearing about Mr. House's request. Why is that problem? He needs inspiration. What do you want? I forget how you get this quest started, because I'm having some issues suddenly. What do you want? Ah, fear of the outside is draining your inspiration. There we go. Uh, you may need a medicine or a speech to start this quest. I know important. I could escort you into the wasteland. Okay, so you don't need to have any of those skills. That's fine. And he gives you the Kodak R9000. There we go. This is a vanilla camera. Just kind of tucked away back here. Click. Sometimes when you point the camera at people, they'll act like you're pointing a gun at them. You better not fire that at me. But yeah, this is just uh, this is a vanilla interaction, a vanilla quest to go around taking pictures of the fun signs. That's base game right there, baby. And as we can see, it's not always easy to find because even if you do find Michelangelo in his workshop, which is already really difficult to find, it, it, sometimes you miss the dialogue option like I did several times just there. It's the camera private quality hates you using. Ah yeah, we'll have to fast travel to Boulder City and take a photo of the monument. That'll be funny. The camera is technically a gun that that does zero damage. Yep. But yeah, this character is working on a busted Securitron. What do you want? I'm kind of busy here. That's Zach doing old man voice. Who are you? Name's Leo, the local mechanic. I usually repair slot machines, electric transformers, and that pool in front of the Ultralux. You would not believe the number of times I've pulled a bra out of that drain. Oh, I'd believe it. So you repair slot machines, and this dialogue entry doesn't go anywhere, but... I know that look, and no, there is no secret to winning slot machines. No secret buttons, no marked machines. Each machine has an equal chance of taking your money, and the odds aren't in your favor. Not that that stops people from playing. Yep, that's Zack doing old guy voice. So, is there something wrong with that robot? Yeah, there is. It won't stop yelling, True to Kaisar, for some reason. I'm trying to get it to stop, but I'm having no luck. So, we could ask how it happens, and he'll talk about that a little bit. You normally fix Securitrons, and he'll we say... We need Michelangelo, Raphael, <laughs> and Donald Tello. That's not what he'll say, but thank you for the bits, Zircon. Yeah, obviously Leonardo and Michelangelo references to Ninja Turtles, who themselves are references to famous artists or inventors and stuff like that. Do you normally fix Securitrons? No, they usually repair themselves, so I never have to bother. But I guess this one can't be self-repaired for some reason. Check upstairs in the open safe. You got it, Ark. Mr. House asked me to look into it, but I've never even seen the schematic for these things. How am I supposed to fix it? I can take a look at it if you want. I wouldn't normally put my reputation in the hands of a stranger, but I'm out of options here. If you can repair the robot, I'll give you the 100 caps House was going to pay me. I won't make a profit, but at least my good name will be intact. 
And we can do a barter check here. Maybe I'll offer my services to Mr. House directly instead. Or we could just do it for the price he asked, but let's let's extort him a little bit. Oh, geez, that'd really humiliate me. Look, here's a bonus 50 caps, up front. Please, just help me fix it. You got it, and there are indeed quite a few ways to do this. It's a very simple interaction, a very small, like, two-minute quest at the very most. You talk to it. True to Kaiser. And that's actually not an AI-generated line or anything. That is cut content. So originally, New Vegas is going to let you continue playing the game after you've done that final battle at Hoover Dam. There was going to be post-game content, but due to time restraints, that got cut. You can't continue the game after you've done that battle. But that voice line was already recorded in the event of doing a Legion run where the Legion now control the Strip. Now the Securitrons are saying that bark. There are some mods to re-add, po- yeah, there's a, there's a mod or two to re-add the post-game content. But yeah, that, this is where this voice line comes from and kind of the inspiration for why I did this entire quest. I found a bunch of deleted Securitron voice lines and I thought, how could I take these deleted Securitron voice lines and make a quest out of them? And this is what I came up with. And right now we see only there, there's only a luck option. So there are like six or seven different options. But if you don't have a science skill or a repair skill or anything like that, then none of them show up. So is that a good design choice on my part? A player will come in here. They'll try to do this unmarked quest. They'll see one option that maybe they won't be able to pass. And then they'll walk away thinking that was a dumb quest. There was only one way to do it. And I didn't have the skills for it. But secretly, there was like five or six alternate routes that they didn't know about because they didn't have the skills. Is that bad design on my part? Or is it okay for the player to be oblivious? I'm not sure. It's a game design question that I'm not solid solidly confirmed on. We could try to come back later, or we could try our luck. But I think our luck is very low, and this is not going to work out well. Uh -oh. Well, I suppose this is what I get for putting my trust in a total stranger. I'll just assume you broke it by mistake. Accidents happen after all. Nope, it was on purpose, nerd! Smile for the camera! Smile for the gun camera! You... Okay, either they didn't see that or they're not part of the same faction. I, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, try again. So we'll give ourselves a bunch of science here. Um, player dot set av science 100 and we'll add uh, repair as well and then we could also do more luck too okay true to kaisar true to kaisar and now you see all these different options so you can tell them to get back to work repair the damage get back to work repair the damage um, if we go through if we go through luck it'll be the same thing it, it will be repaired get back to work repair the damage um, you could use this low repair skill to intentionally break the interface. The exact same thing that just happened with him breaking will happen again. So bad luck is the same thing as this repair 30 skill. Same same outcome. And if you've got a high enough science skill, you can reprogram it to spread a pro NCR message. Or if you are for some reason doing a Caesar's Legion run, but you have a phenomenally high amount of science... You can reprogram it for secret Legion use, and it will, if you take this option, it will gather information from the strip and send it back to the Legion, but it won't say that Legion line anymore. It'll say, you know, he'll, he'll be normal, he'll speak normally, but he'll, he'll secretly be working for the Legion. Or, you can reprogram it to spread a pro-NCR message for the fun. If you're doing a super NCR run, and you're like, whatever, pro-NCR all the way. Welcome to Vegas. Capital of the sixth state of the new California Republic. Again, another deleted Okey line. Okie then. <laughs> Okie dokie then. Oh, what is this? I can't have this robot spouting NCR propaganda. Mr. House will not approve. Still, I certainly like it better. And from watching you, I think I might be able to fix it properly myself now. Good enough, I suppose. Hey, quest over. Good enough. I don't think he gives you money if you do it that way, but I think it... I'm not sure. Do you get experience? I don't, I don't think he got experience either. Maybe I should have programmed him to give you experience, but that is... That is one of the ways you can resolve it. Sorry, you can't talk right now. And that was that interaction. I thought it was pretty good too. A little unmarked interaction that made use of some deleted voice lines. So to freeside now, I think. 
Blue Note, South Cistern. Where is it? Where is it? Where's Blue Note? Free sides. East, East, there we go. Eastgate. That was neat. I'm glad you approved, Freya and Avon. Yeah, I, I was happy with it. I was happy with how it came out. Oh, got the camera. I want the gun. Am I going to get attacked around this corner? <laughs> nope. No, I'm not. Well, that's the end of that. The Eliza bouncer took care of him. <laughs> Although it does remind me that there are some people out here. If you're doing the quest for uh, the, the the gathering the three debts for the the kid the, the, the siblings, I can't remember. Um, the Atomic Wrangler debt collector mission. There are some characters that you can um, intimidate using the uh, what you call it. It's the perk, the terrifying presence perk. And terrifying presence in the vanilla game doesn't really do a whole lot. It basically, if you take a if you take the terrifying presence speech option, it gives the character a status effect that makes him flee for about 20 seconds, and that's it. it doesn't even resolve the quest usually. It's very disappointing. So one of the earlier experimentations I did with modding is I made it so that the terrifying presence perk makes their heads explode. So, again, I dabbled in modding a bit before I came up with this this mod pack, this Mike Burn Fires Quests and NPCs mod. I had a little bit of experience under my belt before I delved into making an entire mod myself. Fun stuff, though. Made for a couple good laughs. Am I going to go to the mod? Oh, I forgot to go get, I forgot to go get that... Um, I forgot to get the item in uh, Michelangelo's. So here we are. Wacky Wasteland or Wild Wasteland interaction right here. You might remember this character... I don't know why that voice line didn't play, but you, you might... You might remember this character from the 90s cartoon on Cartoon Network, Johnny Bravo. All aboard air, Johnny! In case of emergency, you can use my seat as a flotation device. Just out here having the best time of his life. It's a beautiful day. Not as beautiful as me. A lot of voice lines directly taken from uh, the show itself. Voiced by Zack. Courier, it's me. I couldn't find any donuts, so I brought some tile grout. A little adaptation, of course. He doesn't say the word courier in the show, but, you know. You know, you know. You gotta interweave it with the game. Man, I'm pretty. Man, I'm pretty. Some people look at cram and say, why? Me? I look at cram and I say, hmm, cram. <laughs> a lot of fun lines. Man, I'm pretty. Man, I'm pretty. And if you are a female character, I think he has a couple different lines as well. Enough about you. Let's talk about me. What do you think of me? There you go. Female-only dialogue option. Hey, baby. Anybody ever tell you I have beautiful eyes? <laughs> you look pretty. I look pretty. What do you say we go home and stare at each other? Yeah, just a fun little reference character. Exactly. Hello, Krob. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. We're just out here enjoying some Fallout New Vegas, talking about this mod that I made a while ago, We've talking about the difficulties in modding. Sell, people. Only at Mick and Hope you had a good evening. Hope you were enjoying whatever you were playing. You recently learned that Johnny Bravo did get laid in the show. It was just between the episodes as showing Johnny winning the girl every so often wasn't very entertaining. Yeah, you, know, you, you gotta give him a, a win in his column every once in a while. So somewhere here in Mick and Ralph's, you say, there's a, a gun I should pick up. I mean, I could go to the arsenal, but maybe it's upstairs. Maybe the gun is upstairs in their room. It's in the cage. Oh, it is in the cage, is it? Welcome to Mick and Ralph's. Show me your guns. And... Like I always say. Yep, okay, so is it up here, like, in the cage? Do I got I There's a rolling pin in there. Oh, there's a gun called Pull, is there? Yeah, these other, other weapons are for decoration, but there is one called Pull. Hey, yoink. Never the wiser. Competitive prices and a good inventory. Never the wiser. So here's the new shotgun. Pull! Ooh! Looks sharp. I like it. Very long barrel on that one, though. Goodness me. Is that an underbarrel grenade launcher? I can't even tell. What do I know about firearms? That, no, that's not a barrel. That's not a grenade launcher. That's, that's a little too small. Is it like a silenced second barrel? I don't know. I don't know how guns work. Oh. Whoa, whoa, careful. No ammo. It's the mag tube. I don't know how guns work. What do I look like? Some kind of gun knowledge guy? 12 gauge, eh? Here we go. What do we got to work with here? Shotgun. Load. Oh, eight, nine, ten. Holy cow. How many shells? Thirteen? Whoa, goodness me. Take a quick look at it. Yep. Can do that and rack it and do a little inspect on it. Yeah. Looking nice. Looking pretty good. 
Ooh, fast fire rate. Neato. Okay. Cool, cool. This seems like a fun firearm. I like it. Maybe I just like it because it's red and I'm a simple man like that. I see red gun, my mind makes the dopamine. Uh, yeah, we'll do a, a quick little teleport out of here and go to the memorial at Boulder City. In case you've never used the camera on the memorial. Again, not directly related to the mod that I made, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just show it off in case you haven't seen it. Where the hell is this monument? It's a competition shotgun, hence the name. That would make sense. Oops. Negligent just charges the name of the game. So here we are at Boulder City. Where's that memorial? Over here. All quiet by the saloon today. Good, good. Hello, don't mind me, just taking a- We won't go quietly. Just taking a picture. That. Just taking a picture of the memorial. Oh, do I have a mod on that fixes that? I've got so many mods on, so many bug fixing mods. Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yup. Yep, looks like that particular bug is fixed. <laughs> Makes sense. What the fuck are you doing? My brother died. So Johnny in the back. Bravo got laid. Meanwhile, it's been 30 years, and Beavis and Butthead still haven't scored. Yeah, well, there's a very good reason for that. It's because Johnny Bravo was Johnny Bravo, and Beavis and Butthead are Beavis and Butthead. My apologies. It was rude and disrespectful of me to do that. All right, apology accepted. Don't let it happen again. All right, I won't let it happen again. Bye. But wop out. I'm gonna do hey. it again. I did it again. <laughs> Okay, I'll see you later, Private Kowalski. Have a good time. Oh, is everyone in... Oh, everyone? Okay. There were, there were more than just the one soldier there. Uh... And then I got chased out of the ruins of Boulder City. They was mad at me. Uh, yeah, so there's the quest for Michelangelo... For Michelangelo to take pictures of various things around the Mojave. Take a picture of the Helios 1 sign. Take a picture of these signs here and there. And now, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> nah. What's next on our agenda? What other places can we go to? Let's see. Oh, there's, yep, there's that one. Oh, Westside's Brothel. That's right. That's right. Let's go to Westside. You left an accidental shotgun sound replacer in the mod. You can delete it in the FX file. Ah, uh, it happens. No big deal. It's all good. You encountered the brothel NPCs while doing the whitewash quest. Very interesting. Yeah. Again, no quest really appoints you to him, but if you do go to the brothel, is it Casa Madrid? I think it's Casa Madrid, yeah. You can find this character. You think Harold should have been in New Vegas, not 3? Well, I don't think they knew that New Vegas was going to be a thing when they were making 3. Or maybe they did, who knows. So yes, the brothel here has the three prostitutes. We got the, the kid and the old lady and sweetie. But I added a fourth one. It's this guy. From the Boomers, again. He's wearing the vault suit, Vault 34, but he's got the boomer cap on. Again, tying those two locations together. Well, hello. You lost? Sweetie's upstairs. Maybe I'm more Jimmy's speed. Who are you? Name's Hot Rod. Not much for talking, but I can get your motor running quick. Well, maybe not you, per se. A woman. Ideally. He is aggressively heterosexual. Where did you get that jumpsuit? I, uh, don't really want to talk about it. Uh, it looks good on you. I was wondering where I could get one. I pry the information from him with a charisma check, or I could go find them. Keep your secrets. <laughs> huh. Believe me, it's not worth the hassle. Not if you had to go through what I had to go through. How much for your services? And then we could... Yeah, because I had that charisma check, we can now inquire about his actual past. If you're so inclined to learn about that, you can go through that. But how much for your services? Sorry, I don't swing that way. Go talk to Jimmy upstairs. He's a cool guy. You don't service other men? No, I don't. Not that I'm prejudiced or anything. Just not me. Fair enough. I don't like seeing penises wriggling around. Unless it's mine, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Fun character. Okay, who are you really? Real name's Rodney, as you may have guessed. I used to live at Nellis Air Force Base to the north. That's why I got this jumpsuit. Supposedly, my tribe came from a vault full of these suits. But that was before I was born. Lived my entire life in Nellis. Loved it. Used to spend my days maintaining the overwhelming firepower we had. Missile launchers, grenade launchers, howitzers, you name it. Sure, I tried my hand at farming and marksmanship, but I was never any good at either. It's only when I grabbed the screwdriver that I felt useful. Again, I feel like the player should have more agency. Well, I made agency. a mistake and someone died. I didn't think I had to explain the weapon. I figured they already knew. But now they're dead because of me. Yeah, they legit just charge. So they exiled me. Took my Pip-Boy and jacket and cast me out to live among the savages. Eventually I found my way here. 
I can't find a hold a gun with it, damn, and most folks around here don't use explosives. So there's not that much for me to repair. I'm glad you enjoy that, Aeon. But at least I clean up nicely, or so I'm told. Bathing habits around here are substandard, so I look great by comparison. And I don't hate this backstory at all. I don't get a lot of business, but what I do get always comes back for more. And that's my story, I suppose. The rise and fall of Rodney. Again, that was six or seven pop-ups of dialogue, and I feel like if I were to do it again, I probably would have added an option halfway through that story for the player to say, okay, enough about that, I want to ask about something else. Give the player an option to jump out of the conversation, because it's not like Fallout 4 or uh, Skyrim, where you can just walk away while they're talking to you. You gotta finish the conversation. Tell all your lady friends I got a huge penis. The writing was pretty good. I'm glad you enjoyed that. I'm glad you enjoyed the writing. I think he's great. Hello again. Goodbye. See you soon. And as you might imagine, if you are playing as a female character, the interaction is different, but it's actually significantly different. How much chaos have I missed? Also, <laughs> the bits won't stop. Thank you, Venezuelan. How much chaos? Uh, a little bit of chaos. The, just the right amount of chaos. The perfect amount of chaos. <laughs> but we're still going, all right. You think the writing is pretty solid? Thank you, Arc Charger. I'm glad you enjoy. I really am. So, female character, let's talk. Oh, hey there. You looking for love in this dark hole? Because I got plenty to give. <laughs> oh, yeah! And you can inquire, again, who are you? Name's Hot Rod. Not much for talking, but I can sure get your motor running quick. Hence the name, Hot Rod. Different dialogue, because you're a female character. Where'd you get that jumpsuit? I, uh, don't really want to talk about it. I think if you have the Lady Killer perk, that's also a way to get him to start spilling his guts. Uh, we have Charisma, but we don't have the Lady Killer. But, uh, yeah, we could do the Charisma option to open it up. Or if we had the Lady Killer perk, we could do that instead. Fine, then. Keep your secrets. I will. Thank you. Uh, where'd you get that jumpsuit? This again? Look, I told you, I don't want to talk about it. All right. Fine, then. How much for your services? 200 caps. According to all the very many women I've been with, I'm worth it. And 200 caps to say, let's have sex. How much for your services again? 200 caps, and the spankings are complimentary. How much for your services? 200 caps, and boy, howdy, it's worth every penny. <laughs> really trying to sell me on it. I should go. Tell your friends I got a huge penis. Welcome back, baby. So, yeah, you have the option of having intercourse with this prostitute. Baby, you won't regret it. But if you do so happen to regret it, no refunds. And, yeah, it, it's New Vegas, so the screen fades to black. It gives you the temporary well-rested well perk. And that's kind of it. Obviously a little disappointing, but, I mean, that's New Vegas. That, that's just how the game is. But if you felt like getting that perk over and over repeatedly, or you just wanted to see what dialogue he had... Welcome back, baby! Zach recorded multiple lines. Do me now! Time for a little of the bouncy bouncy! Many, many lines. Welcome back, baby! Oh, sorry. I got too eager. I jumped the gun. Do me now. Looks like I'm bringing an al dente noodle to the spaghetti house. <laughs> you had a hard time saying that one with a straight face. <laughs> Welcome back, baby. That's a pretty good line. <laughs> Do me now. I am ready to engage in gland-to-gland -gland combat. Yep. Just so many lines that we recorded for no real reason. Welcome back, baby. Other than it was fun. Do me now. Time for another hot beef injection. Yep. We just keep on going. Welcome back, baby. I think we're getting close to the end, though. Oh, boy. More sex. <laughs> That's the last one. A uh, lot of fun lines there. A lot of fun lines. <laughs> okay, where to now? That was uh, West Side. Oh yeah, Crimson Caravan. We got stuff in Crimson Caravan. There's more than I remember. Camp McCarran, we're vilified. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Open the gate to the Crimson Caravan Company. Yup. Uh, I don't know if Ringo has... Yeah, Ringo hasn't arrived yet because I haven't done his quest yet. Please, no flash photography in the whorehouse. So, if you stray a little bit to the left of the entryway... Ha <laughs> ha! Going east is risky. Even if the roads are safer, that doesn't mean the ruins are. There might not even be any ruins to explore. But if we go back, we'll be in the same position where we left. The east is a mystery. 
If we don't go, we'll never know what could have been. Ah! What if Utah is even worse than Nevada? What if there is nothing for us to salvage? We've been traveling for months with nothing to show for it. We always knew that was a possibility, but we still shouldn't give up. And of course, I did, I did take into account that the player might interrupt this conversation and start speaking to them while they're going off on each other, but uh, yeah, I didn't interrupt it, but I did plan for that contingency. So yeah, we got two British caravaneers here. Hello, lovely day, isn't it? The audio isn't quite pitched to where, where it should be, but who are you? The name's Egghead, and this is my mate Quinton. Pleasure to meet you. Bit on the nose name there, wouldn't you say? Uh, who, who, uh, wh what were you talking about with your friend there? My friend and I are scavengers, or prospectors, if you prefer. We explore destroyed buildings for valuable pre-war loot. Medical supplies from hospitals, ammo from gun shops, tools from factories, you get the idea. People pay good caps for these things. Sadly, the ruins around California seem to be picked clean these days. We came east hoping things would be different, maybe find some untapped pre-war buildings. That hasn't happened, unfortunately. Yeah, just some scavengers. I'm beginning to suspect the desert wasn't very occupied before the war to begin with. And then we could give him some information. Uh, we could give our opinion here. It's safer in California. You should return west. Or you'll never succeed in life by playing it safe. Go east. Uh, I probably should have included a third line so that the player doesn't feel forced to give their opinion if they don't feel like it. But uh, I didn't. I should have, but I didn't. Um... Yeah, go east into Kaisar's territory. What could go wrong? You and Quinton would get along well, then. He's been trying to tell me the same thing, but I don't buy it. Now you're more reserved, are Regardless, you? Regardless, I'd sooner enter hell at his side than turn around and return alone. Your voice sounds strange to me! Yes, I hear that a lot. Quinton and I grew up in a vault back west where we spent most of our lives. Oi, Mike. Any Thing plans for Fallout London? Maybe not a full series on the channel, but perhaps stream it. That was English, I guess. Yeah, I no concrete plans yet because the mod isn't even out, but Zach and I are looking forward to it, and uh, it will probably be on the channel in some form. Maybe it won't get the same treatment that The Frontier did, where we spent an entire year on it, but I'm sure that Zach and I will show off at least part of it, and whatever parts that he and I don't show off on the channel, I'll probably try to uh, show, the rest, show the rest of it off on... Uh, on stream, get some footage of it, see what it's all got, see what it's all included. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely looking forward to playing some Fallout London when it comes out. About the vaults is that they're quirky, to put it nicely. Each one is different in its own way, for better or for worse. Everything in our vault came from a place called Britain. Radio songs from Britain. TV shows from Britain. Robots with British accents. Hollow discs, you get the idea. Imagine our surprise when we finally left the vault and everyone was all, Hey y'all, welcome to the wasteland. You're part of the new California Republic. Yeehaw! <laughs> if you ever encounter someone talking like me, chances are they came from the same vault. Any other backstory they give you is probably a lie. You say that you assume these characters were 3D NPC guys. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. I'm glad that my work, uh, my work, my work kind of blended in with uh, that that mod as well. That, that's what I was going for. I wanted characters that kind of felt natural, part of the environment. They could slot them in; it would feel kind of natural. So excellent. My duck character is cute. Thank you for saying so, Aeon. Good night, CPHP. Have a good night. So, uh, what's the story of your vault? You could you could ask him about the story of his vault. You could ask him what the best ruin he ever salvaged was. He's got some things to say. He's got some fun dialogue. I'll be here, trying to talk some sense into Quinton. And we've got Quinton here. Hello, stranger. The name's Quinton. Nice to meet you. Good night, Chaos. What were you two arguing about? My friend and I are salvagers, looking for loot in abandoned pre-war ruins. Found some good stuff in California, but Nevada's been a dry hole. He thinks we should go back west, but we probably have to give up scavenging in favor for a different life. Untouched ruins are hard to come by, you see. Personally... I think we should continue east. The desert might be harsh, but it's beautiful. 
more importantly, there's probably a lot of loot for us to find. Right, I was already talking to him about that. And here we have the option to talk to Quentin about his dilemma and uh, try to convince him that he's right or try to convince him that he's wrong and he should listen to his friend and not go into Legion territory. Hello, Secret of La Place. Or La, or La Place, I'm not sure. What was the best ruin you ever salvaged? Definitely a hospital in a place called Fresno. We were probably the first people to set foot in that building since the bombs dropped. Medical supplies are valuable and incredibly lightweight. <laughs> what a score that was. We lived off that fine for years. Years. Marvelous. If the rest of that building hadn't been collapsed, we might have been able to spend the rest of our lives out of that hospital. And as you can see, these characters were not voiced but by the me. the well ran dry, and we had to keep moving. Such is our life of a scavenger, hoping that lightning strikes twice. So yeah, Quentin's voice actor you probably do recognize. It is Joshua from the New World Parliament series. Bullet UK, the mod author for that, agreed to voice Quentin. So, about your dilemma. We still haven't decided yet if we want to head east or return west. Yeah, so, so Quentin is voiced by... Use my mouse there. Quentin is voiced by Bullet UK, and I want to make sure I get this right. I don't uh, get the information wrong. Where, where are the credits at? So, yeah, Quentin is voiced by Bullet UK, although you know, the name is incorrect in this documentation that I have. And Egghead is voiced by a Scottish drunkard who is uh, in our Discord channel quite a lot, member of the community. I originally tried to get a different voice actor. Egghead is... Egghead was designed with a different YouTuber in mind, Many a True Nerd. I reached out to him. Many a True Nerd. And I enunciate my words, Mike. I reached out to him and asked if he was interested. He expressed interest, but uh, when the time came to record, record dialogue, uh, I couldn't get a hold of him. So uh, Scottish Drunkard offered their voice instead. So those are the two characters. And of course, uh, many a true nerd has his... his um, when he's doing real life skits, he's, he's portraying himself as a, a half carton of eggs, which is where the egghead thing would have come in from. Anyway, we see we can convince Quentin to go east or west depending on our skills. So um, we can choose, pick and choose. If we just kind of pick all of them, then we're not really picking left or right, east or west. So surviving in the desert isn't easy if you're unprepared for it. There's a lot of untouched energy weapons in the east. I bet the Legion can't hack terminals or open mechanical doors. Yeah, they're probably overlooking lots of useful items. We can definitely turn their profit that way. Yeah, convincing them to go into Legion territory. Ah, but... Hmm. It'll be tough to trade salvage in the wilderness. True. We might find valuable tech, but not have anyone to sell it to. And I hate to lug heavy loot for hundreds of miles just to make a profit. Is Egghead still technically a Mania Trinard reference? Sure, we'll, we'll say he's a reference. Could have been more of a reference, but yeah, kind of like the inspiration for the character. There's a lot of untouched energy weapons in the east... Would you willingly walk into Legion territory knowing what they're capable of? You have a point. If they ever suspect we're spies or drug runners, we'll be dead by daylight. It's a big risk. So if you don't have any survival... If you don't have any points in survival or points in energy weapons, then these options just don't appear. And you'll have to say, that's all for now. Anything else? Then I guess you can come back later. We still haven't decided yet if we want to head east or return west. Surviving in the desert isn't easy. If you're unprepared for it, you shouldn't go out into the desert. It's true that we haven't really strayed too far from civilization. We may not have the skills to survive the elements if we go deeper. So you, you can talk him into going east or going west. Once you've told him three pieces of advice for either direction, he will commit to that direction. So, have you made your decision? Yeah, I think you've convinced me that heading back west is the better plan. I'll talk things over with my friend and work out the details. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for the raid, our one Koro. Welcome. Hope you had a good evening. How are you feeling, Egghead? I heard you convince Quentin we should head back west. I appreciate that, friend. Take this as a token of my gratitude. Subtitles didn't match up there perfectly, but it's we'll okay. probably stick around for a while longer, do some work with the Crimson Caravan. Our Brahmin could use the break. Didn't program you to leave the cell. What's the story of your evo What was the best ruin you ever salvaged? I'd say the best place I ever salvaged wasn't a ruin at all, but a field. Purple and pink flowers. Natural beauty like that can be difficult to find. 
Resting among the poppies was a squad of enclave soldiers. They'd been there for a while. The flowers were rooted in their rusted armor. Most of the tech was destroyed, so it wasn't the most profitable find. But I don't think I'll ever again find such a hauntingly beautiful place. Yeah, just imagining the imagery that that conjures up. I've heard rumors of an ant-themed serial killer roaming the wastes. Be careful out there. The antagonist, yes. Yes. Indeed. Thank you for stopping by, Awan Koro. Sounds like you had a bit of a rough night. Have a good night. Hope you can find some relaxation. So yeah, those two characters. Who else haven't I shown off yet? Well, obviously the different Powder Ganger assassins and whatnot. Uh, the Legionaries. Yeah, I gotta go to the Legion camp and talk to some of the Legion characters that we made. Ah, there's one in front of the Gunrunners, though. That's right. Probably the only remaining person I haven't showed off on this side. Well, this is where I take my leave. Have a great night, Mike. And same goes <laughs> for the chat. Back to the battle with this game. Thank you, Venezuelan. Thank you very much for the bits and thank you for the kind words. I wish you the best when you're battling New Vegas, getting it set up the way you want it. Thank you very much. Welcome back, Devil Sorrow. Did you miss anything? Oh, yeah, we've just been going through it. If you missed anything, you can always go back and watch the VOD later. The Gunrunner is right here. Why do you recognize the antagonist? Because that was the enemy in Fallout 3. Why does that pronounce Mike like that? I don't know. I, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't do it consistently, so I, I couldn't tell you. Mike. Yeah, I know. Uh, so yeah, this character right outside the Gunrunners. Fun little character. Tired of cleaning up dead bodies? Disintegrate your enemies with an energy weapon. The wind will blow the dust away. He's a very staunch energy weapons aficionado working for the Van Graffs, just barking out here on the gun owners, telling people, telling people not to waste their money on crappy ballistic firearms. Why would you do that when you could have a energy weapon? Yes. Once this whole caravan gets out of my way. Tired of cleaning up dead bodies? Disintegrate your enemies with an energy weapon. The wind will blow the dust away. He's got a couple different barks, he says. Do you like guns that suck? The gun runners have you covered. You back away, you get closer, he says another one. Tired of cleaning up dead bodies? Disintegrate your enemies with an energy weapon. You've got more than those two barks. Away. Come on, try again. 9x18 Makarov ammo won't work with guns that need 9x19 Parabellum rounds. You're probably buying the wrong ammo. Yeah, so he's out here trying to dissuade you from buying from the gun runners. One more. Okay. Friend, I can tell just by looking at you that you've got potential. Energy weapons weren't made for you. You were made for energy weapons. Who are you? The real question is, who are you? Because if you're shopping here, you must be a nobody. Well, I imagine the gun runners don't appreciate your yelling. They can be unhappy all they want. I'm not doing anything illegal, and they know I work for the Van Graffs, so they can't touch me. The Van Graffs, uh, you say the Gunrunners have a unique firearm in there thanks to the, the weapons add-on back? Ah, I'm not going to bother going in there right now, but good to know. Thank you. What makes energy weapons so much better? To start, ballistic weapons have so many different kinds of ammo types. Bullets for a 9mm handgun don't work in a 10mm pistol. 22, 308, 357, 44, 45, 45, 70, 50 cal, 5mm, 5.56mm. Where does it end? It just keeps going. Kind of echoes my sentiments. And it's not like you can easily convert one to the other. Pistol primers, rifle primers, and shot shell primers are all incompatible. It is a pain in the ass in this game. By comparison, there are only three types of energy weapon ammo, which can each easily be converted to one another at any workbench. You pick up some energy weapon ammo, it's compatible with your weapon. But we're just scratching the surface here. And see, here we go. We can interrupt him or we can let him continue. I need more of this in my previous interactions. But please, continue. Energy weapon ammo can also be recycled. Once you've fired a few cartridges, you can resupply at any workbench. Try doing that with ballistic ammo. Can't do that. The powder is used up. And you don't want to go digging in corpses to get that lead back, do you? Also, you can overcharge your ammo to give it armor-piercing properties. Convert regular ammo into AP ammo. Can't do that with hollow points. Makes a couple of... Given all the advantages, why wouldn't you use energy weapons? Very salient points. Kahuna Kuma, you say you started playing 76 and it's not as bad as it was. Um, if you enjoy it, more power to you. Every time I've gone back to it, it's been nothing but pain for me. But uh, I've stopped caring to rant about it. I'll just let people enjoy it. Totally fine. 
Energy weapons do have their drawbacks, and you can convince this energy weapons crier to, this energy weapons crier to stop barking in front of the gun runners. If you can convince him that energy weapons aren't as good as he thinks. Drawbacks? Like what? So we could use survival, and again, we see it doesn't tell you if you're going to pass or fail, so there's a good chance that we might fail some of these checks. Energy weapons are uncommon, so you can't scavenge ammo easily. Most of us prefer not to explore dangerous ruins for our basic necessities, friend. Okay, so that one was a failure, but if I had a higher survival skill, it might have been more convincing. I think if you pass three or four of these, then you can convince him. Um, the Van Graffs have a monopoly, and monopolies lead to price gouging. The Van Graffs do fair business, despite having a de facto monopoly on energy weapons. But I suppose they technically could double the prices at any time. And if you've put your entire stock into energy weapons... Uh, uh, he's got his doubts now. Uh, what is the energy weapon equivalent of non-lethal beanbag rounds? Non-lethal? Well, uh, okay, you got me there. There's no such thing as non-lethal energy cells. That's never been an issue for me, because typically I only shoot at things I want dead. But I can see how that could be a deal breaker. Mm-hmm, yup. Uh, and it's tougher to find replacement parts for energy weapons. I suppose that's true. If you're not handy with a wrench, you might end up paying for frequent weapon repairs. I'll give you that. Um, I'm not sure if that's enough to convince him, but uh, most people aren't educated enough to convert and recycle energy ammo. We could try handing Oops, out instructions. skipped it. All right, I skipped it, sorry. And energy weapons cannot be silenced. That's true. Most people who use plasma and lasers don't try to hide it. If you want to be stealthy, yeah... You can't use energy weapons. I made a mod. What is the mod? It is called Mike Byrne Fires NPC Quests and NPCs. Mike Byrne Fires Quests and NPCs, which is what we're showcasing right now. So I couldn't get that survival check, but that's all for now. You've certainly made a convincing argument. It was a pleasure talking to you. How long did this mod take to make? I worked on it off and on for a few months. A little bit here, a little bit there. So I don't know, maybe like... Two weeks of work, maybe. It's hard for me to guard. Hard for me to gauge exactly how much time it took me, but it was done in incrementally over time. I should go. Energy weapons, wave of the future. Yep. Sounds so dejected. Basically, every interaction in this game took me like I don't know a few hours to program. So this guy right here took me maybe three or four hours to make. So if you consider that I've done. Like, 20 or 30 interactions here, I would say. Yeah, a, a good a good two weeks worth of proper work, I suppose. Hey. I should go. Energy weapons. Wave of the future. Energy weapons. They're not silent and they're not strong, but boy, are they still technically weapons. Yep. And now he has a bunch of different barks where he's still being paid to praise energy weapons out here, but his heart just isn't in it. His heart just pew, pew, is pew, 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 pew. Energy weapon. Yep. just not in it. <laughs> Broke that man. Yep, that poor man. That poor broken man. Energy weapons. They're not silent and they're not strong, but boy, are they still technically weapons. He's got three or four different lines. Let's see if I can trigger uh, one or two more. You too can enjoy a minimal increase in combat effectiveness for the low, low price of whatever the Van Graffs are charging today. <laughs> yep. And it was at least one more. Eh? Disintegrate your enemies with laser weapons today. Be careful not to inhale the ash pile. I think there are one or two more, but you get the idea. Yep, that's that fun little interaction. He's a broken man, and you, you can't fix him. He's, that's just how he is for now. It's time to save Scum, because he does not deserve that fun stuff. So I, I think the only other things I haven't shown off are over on in the, in the fort area. Aside from the hit squads, which I don't think are even... Available in this instance of the game in the most updated version the hit squads have been disabled But there are a couple of interactions uh, not just at the fort not just at the fort, but also at Cottonwood Cove It's Legion stuff. So let's get some Legion reputation by Killing Benny in the strip his smile keep and enthusiasm were him. indeed gone You want to keep my hands where you can see them? see this? Ah. Oh, no. Oh, they're so upset Give me all that stuff and now I'm bolting out of here. Oh, they're so mad. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hello! The eyes of the mighty Is it Wulpes and Kulta? Okay, I will go talk to Kaisar. 
I'll sue. I'll sue! Hey, you there. I have a message. Yeah, talk to Crocker. Watch out! I'm litigious! Travel to Cottonwood Cove. Yep. Okay, so there are a couple of characters. Oh man, who added this dead slave? Cruci halt! What? Hello, Legionary. I am a humble tra- I was invited, actually. You That's me. Yep, you were waiting for me. Let me in. Let me in. Yeah, there's a character- There's one or two characters around here that Zach and I have voiced. And, uh, this is- There's Legion Mike here, of Hello. course. Made by Agent Fuse. Not- not quite the character I was looking for. Is it you? Yep, that's- that's you right there. Who permitted you to wander around our camp unescorted, woman? This is highly unusual. Oh, right. I'm still in girl mode. I should go. Wale. Wale wale bing bang. So, uh, yeah, this character is voiced by Zach. A few of his lines are very quiet. I could have done more audio balancing on that character. Uh, I'm not super happy with how this quest turned out. I think Florin's part of the quest is fine, but uh, there's a legionary Magnus, I believe. You do his part of the quest. And I don't think it came out as well as I was hoping for. Playing the game with Black Widow and Cherche La Femme. I'm just grabbing all them romance perks. <laughs> Florin looks like a villain. Just look at him. Yeah. Well, I, do we have any Legion reputation yet? We got to get some Legion reputation before we can start. No, no, not yet. Okay, okay. There we go. Um, player dot add reputation F43DD15. There we go. So as long as you've got basic acceptance into Caesar's Legion, you can get the quest from the NPC I've added into the Cottonwood Cove headquarters. Um, another char a couple of characters here added by different mods. Ah, uh, way. Oh, it's Titus from the Titus mod. Wale. Wale. And who are you? You're wise to serve the Legion vanilla. by choice. Vanilla. You're vanilla. You are the character that I added, I'm pretty sure. Not many women would voluntarily walk into a Legion camp for fear of never walking out. And rightfully so. All these legionaries have uh, gender specific. But maybe specific. you prefer to stay. After all, if you voluntarily join the legion, you can't technically be captured by the legion. Yes. So, who are you? I am Decanus Magnus, servant of the great Lord Kaisar. Perhaps you've heard of him? I commanded a contubernium when we first established this encampment. Once the action died down, I yielded control of my men to Decanus Severus. Now I assist my Canturion with ongoing operations. Raiding small towns is nothing compared to what's on the horizon. And what kind of plans might those be? Quite a few, the specifics of which I can't get into right now. As I'm sure you've already heard, Kaisar has got his eyes on the Hoover Dam. A multi-pronged attack is necessary to put pressure on the profligates, so establishing bases like Cottonwood Cove is imperative. Uh, you might be a bit more intimidating if I didn't voice half the characters in this mod, so I've heard your voice coming from some silly, goofy characters. Um, do you have any work for me to do? There is something you could help me with, if you don't mind a bit of a scavenger hunt. Don't worry, there's only one item on my list. I need bottles of vodka. For every ten you bring me, I'll give you a reward of your choosing. You say that it's 2024 and you have still yet to do a Legion playthrough. Uh, it's on your to-do list. Where can you find the mod? Yeah, it's on the Nexus. I am looking to make a bit more Legion content in the future, but right now that's just in the conceptual stage. This mod is available on the Nexus. It is called Mike Burnfire's Quests and NPCs, and there are a handful of Legion things you can do. Yes. You hear Magnus and you immediately think of the 40k Warhammer character and the interpretation from the text-to-speech series. Ah, yeah, Zach really enjoys that, I think. Pretty sure I've seen him enjoying that. So yeah, he wants vodka. Are Legionaries allowed to drink alcohol? No. In fact, we are expressly forbidden to even possess it. That's why I need somebody like you to bring me some. I make a tribal remedy for curing radiation. It's made with peppers, horse nettle, and another ingredient that I can't quite get out here. However, I've discovered that vodka can be substituted for my missing ingredient, so I can reward you if you stock me up. Keep in mind that other alcohols don't work. It has to be pure vodka. So he stood up there because the pose... I, I wanted him to express himself with his hands, but that that pose only works if the character is standing, so it forces him to stand for a second. A bit awkward. Did I make the Legion Mike Companion mod? No, that was Agent Fuse. That's a different mod. The Mike Burn Fire Companions mod. It's different. So this is another instance of me trying to incorporate some of the DLC stuff into the base game. In Honest Hearts, you have all these new tribal remedies... 
you would expect the Legion to be using. So yeah, Magnus will teach you how to make healing poultices and stuff like that before. And one of the ingredients is vodka for... It's, it's not for the healing poultice, but for a, a different tribal thing. See for yourself. Be careful, though. Consume too many at once, and you'll see where it got its name. Fiery purgative. Yeah, the, uh, the tribal... It's the tribal radiation purging medicine. That's right. I'll keep an eye out for the vodka. You do that. I was hoping you had more important tasks for me, though. Too good for the small stuff, huh? Fine, I've got a task for you. Weakening the NCR isn't the only way to tip the scales in our favor. Bolstering our own number also benefits us. My scouts have given me dossiers on a few individuals who might be persuaded to join our fight, but reside in areas currently outside our reach. So go recruit a few folks. Seek them out and see if you can convince them that the Legion is the best choice for peace and stability in these turbulent times. It's a good concept for a quest, good premise, but I don't think I followed through very well. Join or die, name of the quest. And I have some questions about the Legion. Very well, ask them. And of course, as we all know, Fallout New Vegas was very rushed and a lot of Legion stuff got cut. And there, there was planned to be more Legion content to flesh them out a bit more. And instead, what we ended up getting was very bare bones, and they seem almost comically evil. There's no nuance. There are other mods out there that try to add a bit more nuance, try to make them seem somewhat, somewhat understandable. Like, you can kind of see where they're coming from, which the main game didn't really have. Uh, and this is my attempt. You know, I thought I did pretty good making them a believable character that also tries to showcase what makes the Legion good, theoretically. Aren't you ashamed to be a slaver? Slavery is a tool, not unlike a hammer. It can be used to break, but it can also be used to build. Take the Legion, for instance. Our territory stretches east, past the lands of Arizona and Utah, into the lands of Colorado and New Mexico. I've heard our lands also reach into a place called Texas, where legendary cyclones rage for months at a time. Can't say for certain, though. I believe that's referencing the non-canonical game, Brotherly Steel. The reason we can control large amounts of territory is because of our efficiency. Everybody knows their role. They don't question their purpose. An ant colony doesn't function if the ants are anxious, fearful, and indecisive. Each member has a job to do, and they do it without question. Again, I feel like I really went too far with uh, Magnus's dialogue. I've, I've talked about it before, but I feel like I may have overwritten a few characters. Not as bad as some modders who have their characters talk for a good two or three solid minutes straight, but I feel like I really could have cut down their dialogue or offered the player more ways to interrupt if they were getting bored. Why doesn't the Legion use chems? Do you know what the difference is between the Legion's healing powders and the NCR's stim packs? Do you know what component is missing? And you can tell him the answer if you have a science of 60. But if you don't, you can, you can tell him if your science is less than 60, your only response here will be freedom? <laughs> Get really upset. Correct. The chemical formula is the same for both. But stim packs are injected with the use of pre-war syringes. All right, what's your point? There isn't any corporation out there making syringes anymore. They were all destroyed in the war. Syringes are scavenged from pre-war hospitals and drug dens, and they can only be reused once or twice at best. And what happens when the stockpiles dry up? If you think stim packs are expensive now, just wait until it's a luxury market. And I, I believe... For the Republic, healthcare will just be one more thing that the privileged elites enjoy, while the common man suffers. See, this is me trying to give the Legion more depth and give you give the player more of a reason to think that maybe the Legion might have some salient points. They might be understandable. They might not be as black and white evil as the game had led you to believe previously. How can you justify your treatment of women? You mean how dare we keep them in the back lines of our war, away from the gruesome battles that we engage in? How we graciously allow them to be integrated into our family instead of being killed outright when we claim their land? Yes, truly, we are monsters. New Vegas is still the best Fallout game despite its rush job. Yep, absolutely, I agree with it. But it doesn't mean we can't try and look at its flaws from an objective perspective and try and use mods to, to overcome some of those misgivings or shortcomings or, um, you know, just acknowledge them in some way. It might be the best Fallout game. For a lot of people, myself included. But it's not perfect. You treat them like dogs. Women, dogs, weapon, armor. These are resources for each soldier to use. 
gifts bestowed upon them by the grace of Lord Kaisar. If you think treating women like dogs is a bad thing, perhaps you should take better care of your dogs. I liked that line. I have seen the way you abuse them. Do not mistake the captures around here for a properly assimilated Legion woman. Any of these wretches would not hesitate to slip my throat. A true Legion woman accepts her role within our society. She doesn't try to escape. She cares, cooks, and nurses the wounded. They live boring, safe lives, far away from the battlefield. And until these women are ready to do the same, they are worth less than dirt. So I imagine that if you actually were able to see into Legion territory as was originally planned, see more locations on the east side of the river, you might see the Legion in a more beneficial light where the women aren't all being marched to death and all these people aren't being crucified. I'd like to think that that's just the kind of thing they do on the front lines of their battlefield and in their territory, things are a lot calmer. I don't really have any thing to back that up, but I feel like logically, if you wanted to make the Legion a more nuanced and well-rounded faction, that would have to be the case. It can't just be evil torture through the entire thing. There has to be at least some semblance of normalcy in there, right? The NCR treats women much better. <laughs> Seriously? Under societies like the NCR, women suffer infinitely worse treatment. Some are sent to the front lines to be butchered like animals. The NCR doesn't even take care of its widows. They become vagrants, desperately begging on street corners for the next meal. And don't even get me started on the prostitution. Women forced to have sex with random men for the luxury of not starving to death. Freedom only looks good when you're lucky enough to already be well off. And again, even if he's in the wrong, he's making some pretty nice points. Let's change the topic. Yeah, exactly. I hate that he's making a good point. That's what I was going for. Anything else you wish to know about the Legion? Uh, why crucifixion? And I'll tell you about uh, how that sends a message. Sure, it would be easier to slit their throats and dump them in a mass grave. But the extra effort of building and erecting crosses is worth it. It sends a clear message to our enemies. We will not give you a quick death if you resist us. We will not forgive those who defy us. Fear is a useful tool. Raiders and drug dealers do not dare operate in our lands. Neighboring tribes flee or beg for assimilation. Kill one to warn a hundred. Crucify one to warn them all. You say it's good dialogue? Thank you. I'm quite proud of this dialogue. I'm, I'm prouder of this guy's design and his writing and his character dialogue than I am of the quest he gives you. I feel like the quest that he gives you is definitely not that great. Enough questions about the Legion. Anything else? And I could ask some questions about you, but again, this is where I think I went a little too far. He, he talks for like a, a minute or two straight if you ask him about his backstory. Basically reads his own wiki page. You know, I've, I've learned since then, don't do that. What do you wish to know? There are a couple of options. You're very well spo you're very well spoken for a legionary, and I'll tell you that he was he was part of a faction, part of a group that was conquered by the legion. Before he was part of the legion, he was educated. Uh, and he'll tell you what's your personal opinion of the legion? I love serving Kaisar. I genuinely do. Our battles may be difficult, but they're worth fighting. For example, a scouting party of mine once found an abandoned schoolhouse that had been taken over by some no-name marauders. They were attacking supply lines, doing drugs, and generally not contributing anything of value to society. Also, keeping women and children in cages. Perhaps if they had spent more time training and less time getting high, they would have been ready for our attack. They all died. The women and children were apprehensive. They asked if we were going to free them. I told them we'd do something even better. Now, they live safe and happy lives within the Legion, as it should be. I can't help but smile looking back on that memory. As fate would have it, one of those women was assigned to me the day I attained the rank of Decanus. I look forward to seeing her again. Aw, oh, happy ending. But you keep women and children in cages too! What's with that juxtaposition? No, we keep profligates in cages. If you don't understand the difference, that's your problem. And that's just how he sees the world. Maybe it's not the right way to see the world. Maybe people disagree, but that's how he sees the world. How many battles have you fought? I've fought in many battles, usually against groups so worthless that I can't remember any of their names. My first noteworthy battle was at a place called Firebase Zulu. If you didn't hear about it, it's probably for the best. Didn't go so well. That's a reference to the Some Guy 2000 series. Aside from that one misstep... My combat record is exemplary. Yeah, Firebase Zulu is a mod that he never ended up finishing, I believe. But uh, 
His mods make reference to it occasionally, so I am also making reference to it occasionally. All right, and yeah, uh, enough about you. Very well. I will go do your quest. Wale. And if you bring back vodka, he will uh, let you trade in the vodka, and he, he will offer you four or five different possible rewards. But uh, let's go recruit three people for the Legion. Recruit or kill Sergeant Wrighty, Bryant, and Chad. So, let's see. The first one here in Westside. You don't respect his views, but you respect that he's honest and true to them. Yeah! The charismatic villain, indeed. Um, the character I'm looking for, is it you? It's one of these characters I keep right hearing here. about some courier making a fuss over... This guy right here. So, uh, this guy is basically just... He's not very well designed. He's basically like, I, I put an incel in New Vegas. Oh, good day, my fair maiden. Wouldst thou care to spend an evening with a gentleman such as myself? And of course, he's got different dialogue for female people as opposed to male players. Uh, no. Yet figures. Girls don't like nice guys. You just want bad boys because you're all a bunch of whores. Like, I'd make you breakfast every day and give you flowers and kiss your feet. But you immediately write me off because I'm too nice. Very awkward. Meanwhile, you probably spread your legs for every fat soldier you see, you slut. <laughs> I took it too far. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have put this character in the game. He does not fit at all. What's your problem? My problem is that we live in a society that tells women that it's fine to be sluts. Whatever happened to traditional marriage? <laughs> Pull would be good, yeah. <laughs> Back in the days before the war, every strong man had a subservient woman behind him, and they were both happy. <laughs> yep, that's... Now <laughs> we live in a society. <laughs> they stupidly enter abusive relationships with dicks, <laughs> then come crying to good guys like me when things go south. They expect hardworking men like me to support Just their bastard going. children and provide a shoulder to cry on. We're their backup plan. I've heard all these things before. I put in the game. Meanwhile, the dick she was with moves on, <laughs> nailing the next stupid skank in his ever vast queue of female morons. Oh, I think he's almost done. So yeah, I'm pissed that society has fallen so hard. The collapse is imminent. I promise you. Well, another collapse, I suppose. So when I see other people playing this mod, they almost always kill this guy. Understandably so. He is insufferable. Uh, have you thought about joining the Legion? You mean that group of weirdos that keep attacking Hoover Dam? Why would I do that? Uh, women in the Legion are relegated to cooking and cleaning. For you. Well, that just makes sense. The NCR keeps accepting women into its ranks, but women are terrible soldiers. It's weakening the entire army. Traditional gender roles exist for a reason. Men are naturally stronger. Which is why they've always been on the front lines. If you do recruit them into the Legion. Most women can't even do a single pull-up. So of course they're there better is a off payoff. in a supportive role. Why does the Legion get this, but the NCR doesn't? Yep, you got it, buddy. That settles it. I'm going to join the Legion right now. Since they seem to be the only ones with their heads on straight. And away he goes to Cottonwood Cove. No chance to shoot him. That opportunity has eluded me. But don't worry, there is a payoff. Yeah, a lot of people would have just shot him. Understandably so. Uh, the guy in Aerotech Office Park. So, this guy's... Yeah, th this character to recruit for the Legion, uh, doesn't even make any sense, but... Yep, he's here in Aerotech Park. So it's an NCR soldier. Um, when I conceptualized this character, I went, eh, he'll just kind of be like... Super right-wing kind of guy. I don't know. I'll come up with a name later. And I never came up with a name later, so his name is just Sergeant Wrighty. Y yeah, you were praising my writing earlier, but I gotta tell you, if that was a hit, this is a miss. You better have a damn good reason talking to me, civilian! Are you in charge here, First Sergeant Wrighty? No, that would be Captain Parker! As a commissioned officer, he erects me on a technicality. I do like how he references the vanilla characters in this He's game. He's smart enough not to try and boss me around, though. If he tried, I'd wring his scrawny little pencil neck. <laughs> uh, you remember encountering this dude during the whitewash? You completely forgot until now. He's part of a part of a quest you could do for the Legion. What's a first sergeant doing in a refugee camp? 
I shouldn't be here. I also shouldn't be forced to answer your stupid questions, but I'm also doing that too. I mean, the voice acting is pretty I'm good. I'm here because the officers of Vegas are hungry for bacon, but they don't want me hurting the little piggies. I don't think the writing is completely off. We come here to bring law and order to Vegas. We protect it from the worst humanity has to offer, and the locals treat us like dirt. Is this Zach? No, this is not. We put off the Legion, and how do they thank us? By yelling at us, spitting on us, protesting us, refusing to respect us or our flag. Talking a little too much again. One day, some kid throws a few rocks at us, knocks one of my guys out cold. Yeah, the voice is torture on his, the, the voice actor's the throat. He mentioned that. the rules of engagement. I yell, let him up, and so we did. Rules of engagement are for pussies. Now the brass might say what we did was an overreaction. But I tell you what, nobody was spitting on us after that. Yep, kill anyone who disrespects you. You got it. Uh, so the voice actor, I do have it here. I want to make sure I get it right. I don't want to get it wrong, miscredit somebody. Yeah, Francis Bird, uh, in the community, I believe it's Francis Proof Laundry, uh, is the voice actor for First Sergeant Righty here. Wants to emphasize that this character's opinions do not necessarily reflect their own. Which is a, a fun disclaimer to include, understandably so. By the way, saliva carries germs, so technically they were waging biological warfare on you. You were justified with all those people being murdered. I like the way you think. Don't know if the brass would agree with you, though. So yeah, you can recruit this guy into the Legion, and the Legion will be like, Yeah, it'll be easy to break his spirit. And like, no. Very much it won't. This guy is very hard-headed and brash. I don't think he will integrate very easily into the Legion, even if you both hate tribals and stuff like that. I don't think that's going to work. So, didn't think this particular recruitable character through all the way, I feel. What are your thoughts on the current NCR president? I hate most politicians, but he and I are cut from the same cloth. A military man who doesn't hesitate to crush ass-backwards tribals. If it weren't for crap baby politicians back in California holding us back, this war would be over already. He does not like President Kimball. We need more like Kimball and me, and less like pussy-ass Parker over here. He's kind of a jerk. You shot a bunch of civilians and they didn't discharge you? These shitheads can't afford to get rid of me. They're stretched too thin. Another brilliant move by the brass, of course. A Bitter Springs survivor would have been a better choice here. I agree with that, Arc Charger. A great con that was at... Yeah, that would have been a much better inter... Much better character to integrate into the Legion. That would have made a lot more sense. You feel like this guy wouldn't leave the Republic. Yeah, I had to come up with some flimsy justification for why he would, so let's see what I came up with. I, I could just say we're better off without you and shoot him, but about the Legion. What about him? And again, we can try to convince him... <laughs> The Legion is like an onion. You mean because they stink? Or is it because they make you cry? Because you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown and start sprouting little white hairs. What point are you trying to make here? I mean, they both have layers. Onions have layers, and the Legion has layers. So you're saying the Legion is more complex than it would seem at face value? I suppose it's possible. Oh, he's starting to come around. Uh, Legion men really do put you all to shame. Hey, don't let me in with the rest of this refuse. That was strange. Maybe they aren't equal to a legionary, but I sure as hell am. Oh yeah, prove it. Uh, the Legion doesn't tolerate failures. So I've heard. When their first assault on Uber Dan failed, they didn't give their general medal and pat on the back. Oh, you tried your best. Better look next time. Here's a participation medal. No, they set him on fucking fire and threw him off a goddamn cliff. Turtle, you say that the Legion gets an NCR, NCO to torture and crucify here. Yeah, as if the Legion wouldn't immediately take this guy and put him on a cross, right? <laughs> what was I thinking? Was that enough to convince you? I'm still not convinced. Damn. What do you want? Well, there are more options, so... Think you're strong enough to be a legionary? Oh, easily. I've heard the training regimen is brutal, but for someone like me, it'd be smooth sailing. How about now? Call me crazy, but the legion doesn't sound half bad. 
Think I'll head east and see if they can handle a man like me. And so, this first sergeant, this like, this O eight or whatever in the NCR has decided to he's going to abandon the NCR. Everything he's fought for for the last eight years, whatever. I'm joining the Legion because you said a couple of fun lines at me. Morning. Not my best work, but yep, that's that. Who the hell are just a rando? I've got nothing to say to you. Yeah, not my best work. Not my best work. All right, let's grab the third character from Camp McCarran. <laughs> that voice, yeah. Okay, so the character that we are recruiting in Camp McCarran has, uh, he's, he's pulling double duty because I thought it was very odd how when you're playing Fallout New Vegas, you can just walk right into the NCR's main logistical base, their main encampment, their headquarters, where they've got all this sensitive information and nobody challenges you. Nobody questions while you while you're here at the military, at the military headquarters. Just some random civilian, babe, apparently, because I'm a girl, apparently. I'm just, I'm just here now, and they just let me walk right in. So I put somebody in the building to challenge you, to offer up the most minimal amount of resistance. Uh, this is a military headquarters. You know, for soldiers. What's a civilian doing here? And I'm just doing some freelance work. I'm just looking around. Or if I've got charisma, I can say, I'm here to steal all your corn. And there's no option that's going to get you kicked out of the NCR base. I just wanted somebody to acknowledge that you don't belong here. You also could kill him. Well, I'm killing NCR soldiers that ask too many questions. What? No. Found you. Watch out. And then we all go host. Oh, does he have a gyro jet? Is that what I mean? Oh, it's a silenced. Yeah, silenced 22. So, yeah, you, you can just open fire on him if you want. Uh, this is a military headquarters. You know, for soldiers? What's a civilian doing here? You love that he's actually... You like that he sounds like he's wearing that face covering. Yeah, um, I think his armor is randomly generated. He's wearing a costume pack, and that just kind of pulls a random NCR soldier costume for him. So sometimes he's wearing this mask, sometimes he's not. I'm pretty sure that's the case, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I'm here to steal all of your corn. No, not the corn. Anything but the corn, please. Think of the children. <laughs> that face. Yeah, I didn't notice her face right there. <laughs> uh, don't concern yourself with the children. Which of these three puns do I want to make? Oh, please. No corn puns. I don't think I could stomach any more of them. Is there something I can help you with? <laughs> that face. All right, we could ask him what his story is, and then we can get... Yeah, there's a doctor in the Camp McCarran headquarters, Dr. Kemp. I don't know if anybody knows about that. It's vanilla. He's there. I don't think you're ever directed to him for any reason, but there is a doctor at Camp McCarran, so... Again, this guy is trying to do double duty and just tell you that there's a doctor here. Yeah, Doc Kemp offers medical services next to the mess hall. Speaking of which, Farber can sell you some... Food, if you're interested. Food. Beyond that, Contreras runs the armory. If you need any weapons or ammo, he might be willing to sell you any surplus. I am an MP should have been an option. Yeah. Uh, who is in charge around here? And he'll tell you about Colonel Shu. Tell me about this place, and he'll direct you around. He's like a tour guide. Me? I left the family farm when I was old enough to join the NCR and fight the good fight against those Legion scumbags. You made Contreras, you gave him katanas. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm cut out for the soldier's life, but it's a good cause. However, in my absence, my family's farm was attacked by raiders. No survivors. Now the NCR is the only family I've got left. Well, I've got bad news. To their credit, once word of the raid reached local NCR officials, they struck back twice as hard and purged that raider scum from this earth. Silver lining, I suppose. Won't bring my family back, though. Zartha, you say you've been wanting to make mods of the various Bethesda games. Is there any specific tutorials I could recommend to you? Uh, off the top of my head, not really. If you do a search for how to make companions in New Vegas on YouTube, a couple of tutorials will, pile, will pop up. Um, some of them are a, a bit old, but they get the job done. I don't have any off the top of my head, but there are a few tutorials out there on YouTube, so if you just want to get started, just do a, a search and they'll... They'll be right there for you. So, yeah, it's a very tragic backstory you have there, but you should take a look at these incriminating documents that absolutely cannot be forgeries. What's this? 
A letter? It's signed by Senator James. I know him. Let's see here. Operation was a success. Raiders eliminated. Land retaken. Sold to... Sold... Uh, acting. It's acting. I can't believe this. It was a mother-loving conspiracy. Believe it! The NCR commanders were ordered to look the other way and let raiders pillage our farm. Yup. Once the raiders had killed my family, the NCR moved in and seized the land and gave it to Brahmin barons. And you didn't make a stink about that? I... I think I'm gonna be sick. Uh, you were on duty. You didn't know about that. Oh, man. I can't believe the NCR would do this. What are you gonna do now? I... don't know. I can't stay here. I'm leaving. Going AWOL. That face you make when your battle buddy goes AWOL. You know, the NCR always gets what it wants in the end. I have nothing left. But a man with nothing to die for doesn't fear death. I'll kill them all! Oops. Big mistake. <laughs> I, uh... Well, I'm your battle buddy! What are you doing? Uh, why, are you, why are you taking this out on me? I didn't do that! I didn't do it! That takes care of I'm just that. on duty here! Jeez! <laughs> so, uh, I picked the wrong dialogue option, and now I can't recruit him for the Legion, because he, he, went, he went crazy and... <laughs> yup, that, that's what happened. <laughs> you think I should reload? Nah, it's alright. If you want to see it done properly, there are a couple other playthroughs on YouTube. You, you can watch Alex Chess Reach playthroughs mod, because in his playthrough, he kept that guy alive and recruited him successfully into the Legion. But I'll show you what happens when you don't do that. When he dies there, and you gotta explain your failures to the Legion, how are they gonna react? Because I made sure to, to, to program them to react if, if you didn't do it properly. Hey, yo. Hold on, let me turn the light on so I can see you. Hey, yo. Hey, hey. Our way. Oh, way. So, uh, I recruited that weirdo from Westside, you know, the guy that was screaming about how much he hates women. Yes, it seems that the Frumentari, who suggested recruiting this person, may have overestimated their capabilities. They've already been whipped for their failure. As for the troll, he mouthed off to a Canturion and was subsequently dismembered and fed the dogs. A fitting end. Don't worry, this will have no bearing on your reward. You completed the task that was given to you. Ha ha! Ooh, four healing powders. What a reward. And Kaisar's Legion Fey. Marvelous. Uh, I recruited First Sergeant Wrighty. Yes, he was quite the character. Loves structure and order. He'll fit in well here. His biggest flaw is that he lacks discipline. We can correct that easily enough. Break him, if need be. I would actually like to Good see work. you try. He's got a very forceful personality. So I think even if you... You might have to recruit at least one of these three characters. I can't remember exactly how I programmed it, but I think he generally gives you the next step of this quest. This quest has this section right here where you're recruiting three folks, and then he, he sends you to uh, Florin to do another quest. I think he does that regardless, but maybe he only gives it to you if you've recruited at least one person. Um, he should give it to us. Private Bryant uh, died, though. That is not the outcome I wanted. But at the same time, you killed an NCR soldier. I can't exactly hold a grudge about that. Really killed himself. Death by NCR soldiers. So, do you need anything else done? You've proven yourself useful, to an extent. Florin has seen fit to let you in on one of his schemes. All right. Go. Talk to him. Complete his task successfully, and show him what you can do. Okay. Um, I don't have any vodka right now. No business, yeah. Okay, so the final step... Oh, there's Legion Mike right there, just kind of walking around like it ain't no thing. Yep, that's him. You're pointing at him, all right. So the last quest here is, you know, it's all right. This last step here. So, again, I'm trying to incorporate some of the stuff from Honest Hearts because you would think these characters would be using tribal remedies and things like that. And so Florin is a master of poisons, and all the poisons that were introduced in the Honest Hearts DLC are... Basically explained to you, right here. <laughs> it's you. You've been making quite a bit of trouble for our enemies. That's good. Really good. Really seedy character here. Who are you? I am Florin, loyal soldier and venom smith for Kaisar's Legion. 
I've spent many years perfecting the poisons we coat on our blade and spears. That nobody uses because you have to coat each individual spear. Kind of tedious. Can I have some poisons? Here, have a few of my favorites. Oh boy, I was thirsty. Can I have more? Come back tomorrow. I'll have a few more ready by then. And, yeah, he doesn't give you these poisons if you're low reputation with the Legion. Can you tell me about the poisons you use? Which toxin do you wish to know about? I could ask him about these four different poisons. Tell me about Silver Sting. Silver Sting is mildly effective. It weakens muscles, making it useful against wild animals. Stick them once and they become much less of a threat. Yup, that's Zack. It's not a... great toxin, but it's the only one that doesn't require a Cazador poison gland. And you can go through and ask him about each and every poison if you're so inclined. And if you got enough survival, you could ask him, do you think I could make these poisons? You probably could make a few of these, provided you gather the ingredients. Okay, let's talk about something else. Do you have any work for me? You've already proven yourself a friend of the Legion, but I do have a minor task you can help me with, if you can spare the time. And this is another fetch quest. I'm lacking Cazador poison glands, a key ingredient for many of my toxins. For every five you bring me, I'll give you a powerful herbal remedy. Do I have a Discord so folks can keep up when I'm streaming and whatnot? Yes. Let me see if I can post that quickly into the chat. It's exclamation mark Discord. Thank you. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. That was it. Yep, yep, yep. So, yep, that's, uh, that. you get the notifications on when I'm streaming. I believe also when Zach is streaming and whenever there's a new video on the main channel. If you join the Duck Watcher role, I believe. So, the last bit of this Legion quest line, I hear you've been working on a scheme. Yes, I've been working on this one for quite some time now. I've developed a new toxin that, once ingested, causes the subject to perish in a matter of hours. The death is violent and visceral. Yeah, the audio is a little too quiet on his voice lines, unfortunately. This toxin is not easy to make, so I wasn't sure how to best use it until now. But I've finally found my window of opportunity. There's an NCR officer, Lieutenant Cornwall. According to our sources, he's currently wrapping up his tour and preparing to head home, back west. So we gotta go to the Mojave outpost. If he ingests the toxin, it should activate right as he arrives back in California. My hope is that his death causes others around him to panic. I'm doing well, Artifacts Germ. What kind of diseases are our soldiers picking up in the desert? Is it contagious? Will we all die? These are the questions they will whisper. Yes, Sir Ottoman. This is a mod I made not too long ago. And we could ask him about this weird toxin that he made. This weird, suspicious substance. Why is this toxin so hard to make? It simply requires rare ingredients that grow in different climates. Carefully blended to work together. Like a good omelet. Simply put, we've only got one shot at this. Okay, and how do you know that this works? I've tested it on the local fauna. It worked every time, without fail. I just increased the dosage to kill an adult human. Okay, I think I've got it. I happen to know that this officer really enjoys coffee. Black, no sweetener. And since this toxin has no distinctive taste... <laughs> the hardest part might be persuading him to accept a drink from a stranger. You'll have to figure that part out yourself. Good luck. Yeah, again, a problem with having a quest that doesn't have any uh, quest markers, or when it's a little vague, it does mean that sometimes people can't figure out what you're trying to get them to do. And this was another instance where not every player understood how to make this quest progress. Again, kind of a little bit of my fault. I, I could have done it better. I could have made it a bit clearer on what you were supposed to do. But we are going to talk to this guy over here. We met hey. him earlier. What do you want, Civvy? What's a Civvy? That's you. You're a Civvy. A civilian who sadly doesn't know the joy of proudly serving in the NCR. Yep, this is the quest he is tied to. And the quest marker will keep pointing at this guy, but the player might not be able to understand that he... Lieutenant Cornwall is specifically saying Civvy, Civvy, Civvy. What I'm trying to communicate here is that the player needs to go undercover as an NCR soldier, but that's not always everyone's first assumption here. Can I offer you a drink? Sorry, but I don't take handouts from civvies. No offense, but I have no way to trust you. 
Okay, I should go by. Okay, so what we need are two things, and again, not very well communicated to the player. Controlling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. But you need black coffee. Caravans. Hello, are... Major Knight. I'm a courier. Goodbye. So over here, there's plenty of black coffees. So there, there's coffee mugs and stuff, but I actually added the black coffees, which are, again, something that was added by, I believe, Honest Hearts. These coffees aren't here normally, just a bunch of empty mugs. Um, but if you're... Oh, you you saw me grab that. Hello. Thief! Okay, you, I didn't mean to grab that coffee mug. My mistake, I was trying to jump. Please ignore my presence here. I am doing nothing. I am not worth your time. Don't mind me, just squatting here, waiting for you to go away. Doink! Hey, I think I got it, didn't notice. Yeah, the quest says... Bring Lieutenant Cornwall a cup of black coffee. Or poison Lieutenant Cornwall at the Mojave Outpost. Again, it's not very clear what you're supposed to be doing here. We obviously can bring him some black coffee, which I believe I did just loot. Did I grab the right thing? Yeah, okay, we have a black coffee now. And hit F5. If you hit A, if you consume the black coffee... Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear Doesn't do anything, winter. it's totally fine. For some reason, I thought the, poison, the, the coffee would poison you, but that's not... Hey. We haven't added the poison yet. We have not yet added the poison of the coffee, so I can't just... I can't kill myself by drinking laced coffee at, at the moment. So now that we have the coffee and Florin gave us the poison, we can walk up to this guy, and this is where a lot of players get stuck. We've got the coffee. We've got the poison. Now drink it. What do you want? Drink the poison. No. And the, the quest marker is saying, here, go here, go here. Like, maybe I'll reverse pickpocket, nothing? I, I don't know. Yeah, you need to be dressed as an NCR soldier for him to take it from you. And I put an NCR outfit here for the player to pick up if they yeah. don't have one in their inventory. You know, it's stealing though, so... Yeah, that's the, the, the easiest one to get your hands on, which, uh, right here. Yoink! There we go. NCR. I'm now dressed as an NCR member. That's me. NCR with the NCR tunnel snake's jacket sticking out of it. Not very well. It's kind of clipping. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, and now that we're dressed as an NCR soldier... You better have a good reason for bothering a superior officer. Why don't you make yourself useful and return to your post? Uh, I haven't seen you around here before, sir. God willing, you won't see me here for much longer. I'm hitching up with the next caravan for some well-earned retirement. How am I? I am doing well, Ranger. Thank you. This dust bowl is your problem now. A seasoned veteran, I see. If you've been serving so long that you can retire, why are you still just a lieutenant? Kid, don't even get me started on promotion points. Not unless you want to hear me rant for a solid half hour. Reference to the first uh, Campfire Stories video that Zach and I did, back before they were even called Campfire Stories, where he just talked about promotion ports, pr promotion points for a good 20 minutes or so. Is there anything I can do for you, sir? Do you know how to make a cup of coffee? Or fetch a cup of coffee? This heat is making me thirsty. And cranky. I think there's some in the HQ. Hint, hint. I'd get some myself, but I don't want to cross paths with Ranger Jackson. Good night, little he frayer. just about chewed my face off last time. Right. I think he has different dialogue if Ranger Jackson is dead. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if I, if I programmed for that contingency. I feel like I remember doing that, but I may not have. I know that... Uh, First Sergeant Wrighty does have different dialogue if the uh, NCR soldier is dead in the Aerotech Park, but I'm not sure if I programmed Cornwall here properly. Anyway, I have a coffee here for you, sir. It's definitely not poisoned. Black, no sugar. Just how I like it. Thank you, soldier. You're welcome, sir. No offense, but I'm going to pour this coffee into my whiskey bottle before I drink it. Nothing personal. I just don't trust these coffee mugs. There's no animation for drinking out of a coffee mug. Uh, bottoms up. So enjoy your whiskey. Ah, that hit the spot. Thanks, kid. Carry on. He's like every chief you've worked with. Moon, ah, that I nailed it. Moon, you saw me stand. 
Oh no, he died! And exploded! And it definitely wasn't my fault! I was just standing here, just like you! Fellow NCR soldiers! Oh no! Lieutenant Cornwall... Ha muerto! He dead! He wasn't supposed to die! So quickly! Patrolling the Mojave? He was supposed to explode when he got back into NCR territory to send a message! The poison did not work as planned! Whiskey nullifies the poison or amplifies it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on. Oh, crap, crap, crap. <laughs> I'm here. Who are you? Well, I know you're shooting at me because I'm wearing a stupid NCR disguise. How did I forget that again? Every single time. Uh, not good design on my part. Forcing you to put on an NCR soldier disguise and then having you report back to the Legion. So I feel like... Hey. I don't know who you are. You go ahead and get killed. Totally fine. That guy is from Overseer. Oh, that's right. What's his name? Gary or something? Georgie. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't remember why Georgie follows you, but yes, he is from the Overseer mod with Eliza, I believe. I don't know what spawns him. Well, I know what kills him. I know what despawns him. Hello. Howdy. The lieutenant exploded immediately after drinking the coffee. Did he now? I wonder if my calculations were off. Or maybe chemical interference from the caffeine? Well, I suppose what's done is done. One fewer of the Republic's profligates to bother with. And his death probably spooked some conscripts. Yeah, your math was off because you were practicing on squirrels. You've done your part, and here's your reward. May Mars smile upon you. Mars Worshipper, yeah! Alright, Legion fame gained. 30 Legion Denarius added. 3 Cave Fungus of, of yep, they're very useful crafting ingredients. Wally. And Agave Fruit, so if you've got enough survival skill, you can not just make healing powders, you can make a, a solid amount of healing poultices. Death to profligates. Death to profligates. That, that Georgie guy is really tenacious. He, he really wants to die, huh? Also, I didn't really get the chance to showcase it, but a lot of the characters that we've met have, like, death barks. Like, if, you, if you're if you fighting... I think if you are if you start a fight with any of the characters that are voiced by Zack... Hello! Let's see if I can... I'll F5 right here. Oops! He's not going to say nothing now, is he? <laughs> Let me try that again. Nope! That's, that's insta-kill right there. That, that's not... It's too much. Hold on. What do I have that's not lethal? My fists, I guess. You son of a bitch. Yeah, they got dialogue. True to Kaisar. And that's not my character. <laughs> but it is my voice. Damn you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Be more compliant next time, and I won't have to smash. <laughs> yeah. They've got a couple of fun dialogue barks if you start a fight with them or if you, you kill if you kill somebody in front of them, they I think they have things to say too. <laughs> uh let's see. What's like a random person that won't they won't care about. Oh, maybe Trudy. Let's say uh You just straight up murdered him. Couldn't really hear what he had to say because Mike companion that Agent Hughes made yelled over him. Rest in peace, yes. You think this you like this mod to be honest? It makes you think a little more than other quests, which you think is a good thing? Yeah, but I also feel like I could have had a bit more direction. It's not fun to get stuck at, at a quest that you know, sometimes the, the mod author wants you to do something and you can't read their mind. You've got your own ideas, like maybe if my skills are high enough, or maybe if I can find a different soldier to, to bring it instead. Or, you know, the, the people can come up with their own ways to solve a thing. This is this is not Dungeons & Dragons. You can't come up with your own solution and then the dungeon master appro approves of it. The mod author has a solution and you have to figure out what that one solution is, unless they've you know, made multiple solutions. You have to figure out what one of those solutions is. And if it's not well designed like that one wasn't, then, uh, you know, people get stuck. Why you got this freaking? <laughs> what is this outfit? Awe, are you ready to head up river? What? Fucking mod. I'll travel with you. The trip will take. Oh no, you're gonna crash my game. Don't do it. Don't, don't force the time scale to advance. Don't you. you... By order of Kaiser. Okay, apparently it's fine. 
Apparently it didn't crash. I'm lu lucky me. Lucky me. Sometimes that crashes because it tries to advance the time. Um, yeah, I, I came here to the fort because I believe there, there's one more character added by the NPCs and quests mod that we're playing through here in the fort. It's a legionary deep diver. Hi, how are you Didn't today? realize the legion had come from Colorado. We are the legion. We have annexed the lands of Colorado, Arizona, Frickin', um, I, I can't remember the name of the video game now. I was gonna have, I was gonna tell a joke. Bioshock, I, I can't, it, it's, it's ruined now. My brain was dumb, couldn't think of it. Um, where is the character I'm looking for? Where is she? I think she- The new slave girls are quite beautiful. Right, uh, might be outside here actually. Oh uh, yeah, the town of Rapture from Bioshock, thank you. That was the one I was, that was, it's been so long since I played that, I couldn't tell you. So that's where the gate is. Oh, okay, yeah, so it is up this way. You think he wears something like that in vanilla? He wears the yellow radiation suit. That's what I was expecting. And that's only if the Cottonwood Cove is, has been irradiated, which it wasn't. It hadn't been irradiated yet. Okay, here we are. This is the character. So this is the vanilla character. A free woman. It's been a while since I've seen a woman who wasn't a slave. I forget myself. Are you injured? You're a doctor. I have some questions. So yeah, Siri here is a, a doctor kind of character. Uh, give her a tip on survival. You're using one Brock flower per Xander root, right? Oh, I've been using two roots per flower. Thanks to you, I'll be able to create twice as much healing powder per day. You're welcome. Tell your friends I did that for you. I'd like some healing powder. Here, come back in a day if you need more. Huzzah! Six healing powders. Nice. Okay. And so this is, uh, her name is Siri. She's an, uh, she's a legion slave. And, uh, she's not happy about it, of course. She, wish she, she wishes she wasn't a slave and she longs for her freedom. So I made a similar character, but with a different outlook. One of you two. Okay, so one of you characters is the one I made. Hello. I think it's you. I've heard the legionaries speaking highly of you. You've done well by us. I forgot that she was uh, voiced by Zack's girlfriend at the time, now wife. Uh, I have some questions about you. Such as? Yeah, because cause the other one's name is Siri, so this one's name is Alexa. You get it? <laughs> you get it? <laughs> so, you're the cook, eh? Yes, soon to be the best cook in the Legion. The meals I cook taste better than most, and I'm improving every day. I've really found my calling. Don't want to give away all my secrets. But a bit of barrel cactus fruit can really stretch out a steak while giving it a sharp zest. Yeah, so she's just kind of tucked away here. I don't think anyone's ever found her. Where are you from? Originally, New Reno. Only two kinds of women live in that town. Whores and addicts. And the whores were addicts too, so, you know. I joined the NCR to avoid that lifestyle, only to be shipped out to Nevada and told to defend this empty desert with minimal training. While on patrol near the riverbank, my squad was ambushed. The men were slaughtered, but I was spared. Thank God I don't have a penis. I can't believe I made her say that line. <laughs> what was I thinking? That's so mean. How long have you been a slave? A few months, I think. It's difficult to keep track. Though, I'm no longer the profligate woman I once was. She's dead. So, I suppose you could say I've been a slave my whole life. She's just wholeheartedly embracing her life of being a slave. Very well. Um, survival! Oh, if you add some sawdust to your steak, you can feed more people! I'm sure that'll go over well with the men here. I just added wood shavings to your meal. Taste the tree goodness. <laughs> I'll have to come back with proper survival skills. Can I have something to eat? Here. A delicious steak will keep you fighting for the glory of Kaisar. Yay, Kaisar! Two bighorner steaks added. How are the women treated around here? If you do your job and keep quiet, you're treated well. Nobody shoots at me or tries to pimp me. I have food, medicine, and a tent over my head. Yeah, her life actually got better after being enslaved. If you refuse to work or want to mouth off, you get punished severely. Two weeks without a bath or decent meal straightens you out real quick. How bad did her life previously suck? Must have been pretty bad. And hey, what about Siri? She doesn't seem to be uh, so delighted about being a slave. She's been here for three years and still wants to leave. If she saw the opportunity, she'd try to make a break for it. She's desperate. I'd tackle her before she got 20 feet. I won't be punished for her insubordination. Yep, that's how it goes. 
Aren't you worried about being abused here? Abuse isn't tolerated in the Legion. Corrective punishment? Sure. Breaking in a capture? Yes. But not abuse. A few weeks ago, a Kenturian beat his wife to near death. It was bad. When Kaisar asked why, he said it was because she broke one of his cups. He said, Kaisar, you gave me this cup as a gift, and that woman did not respect that. She deserves every bruise and gash on her face. Kaisar replied, This woman was also a gift to you, but you do not seem to respect that, and ordered the rest of the Kenturian's cups be broken. Based on an actual story from a different, uh... The woman was reassigned to another officer, and the Kenturian had to drink out of a plunger. Everyone got the message after that. I believe that's loosely based on an actual story from the Roman Empire that I, I learned about. And again, it's me trying to give a bit more nuance to the Legion. They're not completely evil. Yeah, they're bad. But... And Alexa's life here actually turned around for the better. It's still not great, but it's better. You seem very loyal to the Legion. I've seen the worst the NCR has to offer. As a civilian, prostitution, corruption, neglect, and backstabbing. As a soldier, mismanagement, incompetence, cowardice, and stupidity. None of which I've seen in the Legion. Yeah, Legion's good. If I do my job well, I'll be assigned to a high-ranking officer safe in Arizona. I can think of worse things. Oh, I hear Arizona's nice this time of year. Maybe not so much in the summer. Surely you miss your freedom, though. Freedom is only good when you're rich. When your choices are starvation, prostitution, or worse, no. I don't miss it. And that's that. Very well. I believe... Oh, yeah, I, I gotta get a good survival. Sure. Let me give myself a bit more survival so I can see what you gotta say here, because it's honestly been so long I forgot completely. I wonder if I could do your job if our positions were reversed. I wonder if you could do mine. Oh, right, because I'm still playing as a female character. That's right. Uh, if you add pinion nuts to your steak and cactus fruit, you can make a hearty desert salad. Again, that's a recipe in the game. So, there, there you go. That's a free one. Really? That could be a real crowd pleaser around here. I'll try it out. Thanks. All right. And there we go. Can I have more things to eat? Sorry, I have to make sure everyone is fed today. Please come back tomorrow. Okie dokie. Sure. Yeah, I, I still, I'm still pretty comp, I'm, I'm still pretty happy with uh, this character. Uh, there's a different mod adding. <laughs> so again, that character is inspired. Yeah, this character is added by outside bets. So there is like deleted references to a woman being here at the stand. Uh, it looks like. Myself and another person both separately had the idea of re-adding that character, so now they're both here managing the same stall. You think most of the Legion characters work pretty well? Thank you. Thank you. I'm not 100% satisfied with them, but I think it's pretty good. I think I did pretty well on a lot of them. But I do believe that was all. Uh, that was all of the characters, and um, I believe I don't think there's any more. Let me double check my... my uh, not really a, my, my notes here. Let's see. Yup. 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 Yeah. Aside from a few hit squads. Yeah. Uh, the powder gangers will attack you. If you become vilified with a faction, if you kill 15 great cons, uh, assassins will spawn and uh, brotherhood of steel. If you become vilified with them, but I believe I took those three separate hit squads out of the latest version of the mod because of negative feedback uh, that they were not coded very well, and they did just kind of show up wherever they frickin' felt like. But yeah, that was all the characters, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice wide variety of characters added throughout the entire Wasteland. Many of them, I, I think, still hold up. Um, some of them, I still think I could have done better, and if I were going to do an update... If I do an update on this in the future, I'll probably decide to maybe remove some of the interactions I'm... Less less happy with, maybe. But, uh, yeah, I think it's all still pretty good. You say most of the Legion perspective is told from the NCR and NCR-leaning peoples, which paint the, the Legion to be an absolute evil force. But Raul and other characters do speak, you know, more modestly of them. Yeah, again, uh, a lot of Legion content got cut from the initial release of New Vegas. Uh, like, um... I'm sure a lot of people know this by now, but um, Ulysses was supposed to be at the, uh, what you call it, Lone Wolf, not Lone Wolf Radio, but uh, Wolf House Shack. It's that shack not too far from Nipton. There was, that's where 
Ulysses was originally supposed to be, but he got cut, and so now there is no Legion faction companion in the vanilla game. And then he got added to the uh, Lonesome Road DLC. He got kind of pushed there instead. But uh, a lot of Legion content got cut. A lot of it. It's really unfortunate. Are Zach and I going to play this together? Um, there are a lot of other New Vegas mods for us to get to. I don't really know what else I would say about it. I just kind of wanted to go through it True and talk about Kaisar. how I went through developing it and the the issues I had. Some of the things I had to... <clears throat> some of the different things I had to keep in consideration when I was programming... Those two, those two were distracting, walking into each other. I had to keep in mind that sometimes... The player has the opportunity to break the mod. I got to keep in mind, like, what if they attacked this character while this character was in the middle of having a conversation? Okay, I am... My clothes got shot off again while I was in girl mode, so now I'm just a naked character, and I see him... I see him weird when I play as this kind of character. I'm looking forward to getting sent across the river. Anyway, as I was saying... I was going through the old mod that I made talking about how I had to plan for a couple of contingencies, some of the struggles I had to deal with, some of the problems I had to face, and some of the solutions that I came up with to get around those problems. Like, I can't put a person, I, I can't put a male character in a dress. Well, I will have this makeshift solution where I just make the most masculine looking, quote, female True character character with the, the female body type and just kind of run with that things like that have you ever thought about playing with zach on a new vegas multiplayer server uh we, i've i've looked into it but yeah it, it's fine we're fine doing our own thing we have encountered some of these characters like i know zach has seen johnny bravo and um the new slave girls are i know he's beautiful. shot at rob's character checks when we were in prim a couple times a couple we've had a couple interactions with them yeah it's kind of annoying when my clothes get shot off. Two streams in a row, my clothes just got shot off. Ridiculous. If I just kind of brush my ear, it starts beeping at me. I, don't, I still don't understand it. I'm looking forward to getting sent across the river. I look forward to killing people. Yeah. Hello. Howdy, howdy. So yeah, that's all the characters that I believe are in this mod. Sense. At least the ones that I can recall and that I kept notes of. There may be a few more, but I think that was... All of them, even the like the the one-off wacky characters that show up for a one or two lines of dialogue. I'm pretty sure that was all of them. Uh, yeah. So if you guys have any questions about what I was doing when I was making this mod, about my process or some of the issues I had, uh, yeah, go ahead and ask them now. I'll try and think of anything else I can say about this mod. Stop picking your nose, man. These guys are all distracting. Maybe there were some characters that I was planning that got. Uh, there were uh, there were like a thirty or. 40 characters I was planning, and I didn't get around to making all of them. But, um, yeah, I wanted to add characters that felt like they should have been here, like a Doctor in Prim, or, uh, oh yeah, Wishman! I didn't show off Wishman, that's right! Will I make- I have been here the whole time listening. Much love and bits from Alaska. Hey, thank you, Oof Potato! Ooh, Alaska, nice. I've been to Alaska. Thank you for the bits. Will I make a part two or another mod? Yeah, I've been in the, I've been looking into that. It's hard to find the, the time and also the motivation these days. Sometimes I get really down on myself, like, oh man, I, I, it's so hard to get started, you know. I've got an idea for a couple of mods I want to make, but you sit down at a, at a computer and you think, how do I even begin? Where do I even start? Do I write the dossier? Do I just kind of, just kind of write some lines of dialogue? It's, it's tough to get started. But I have been trying to make a few few new things in my spare time. But Wishman... Actually, I don't think Wishman has been relocated yet, because I ha he might still be in Good Springs. How difficult is it to implement Lip Sync? I don't think it's too terribly difficult to implement Lip Sync if you have the files. Uh, again, you, ha you have to copy-paste some files from the Skyrim creation kit. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but... You can record directly into the GEC, and it works fine. And if you have somebody else record voice lines, you can have them send it to you. You bring it into the GEC, and then you hit a button that says make a lip file for it. So lip files generally aren't that difficult to make. It, they definitely shouldn't be. It, it should be auto-generated. Um, is he still in the Prospector Saloon? Yeah, he's still here. Hey, kid. Hey, kid. All right. Hey, that's a pretty good rifle. Even if the rate of fire is a bit slow. True, but bolt-action rifles like that are good for sniping, and not much else. 
getting yourself a sidearm wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, so it just, you pass that and you get a little bit more, more respect for him, but that doesn't do anything. You have heard that difficult tree, uh, dip, you've heard that dialogue trees are annoying to do. Well, Fallout 4 is the one that I believe has dialogue trees. Um, New Vegas, I don't think has dialogue trees in the same way. But yeah, sometimes it can be difficult to make the dialogue play out the way you want it to, going into the right directions. So uh, what we're going to do here is going to complete the Run Good Springs Run quest really quick, which so it should send Wishman to the next destination. Hey, Sunny Smiles is on our side. I heard about what's been going on in town. Oh. Our deal's off. I can't trust someone like you to watch my back. Dang, all right. Well, Joe Cobb is dead. Can I not progress either quest at this point now? Have I locked myself out? I may have. Shit! I wonder if that's going to make Wishman go away at this point. I, I think you have to at least progress one of those two quests. Otherwise, I don't think he actually... Uh, Hey, kid. All right, all right. Yep, 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 yep. I should go. So what we're going to quickly do is load from an earlier save file before I shot him. Like, right here, from three hours ago. That should be fine. Yeah, here we are. It's tail time. We're going to we're gonna do the quest for the Powder Gangers, actually. So I can show off that Wishman and Toolman do have dialogue. Player dot set AV speed malt 200. It's getting kind of late, so i got to wrap this up. So we'll just kind of... Really, really quickly sprint around here and get this set up. Um, but I will show off that Wishman and Toolman do have dialogue if you're doing this for the Powder Gangers. Oh, for goodness sake. Sunny smiles. Hey, hey found you! Now it's your turn to go seek, and I'll hide under the rubble and you'll find me. Hi there. Sticking around Good Springs for a while long? Why don't we go survive in the desert together behind the saloon? Come on, Sonny. I believe in you. She's broken for hell. She's so freaking broken. Okay, I think she's out now, but I think... All right. Tutorial over! Oh, no! Oh, Fallout New Vegas, what have you done? This is definitely your doing and not mine. Whoa, no! No! No, 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 okay. I think, I think I should turn collision back on. And now I think I should, I should, um, load a different save. Because that one clearly doesn't want to work. <laughs> and we can talk to, um, Toolman over here. Hey, Toolman. Still freaking out a little Watch bit. Out. Ow, what the? Watch out! Who am I shooting at here? Who is this? Is that Doc Mitchell? Who am I shooting at here? Who is this phantom that's chasing me? The game is broken and I don't understand what's going on. Uh -huh. Ready as I'll ever be. Was that Doc Mitchell? Doesn't sound like him. All right, well, he's dead now. Tim Toolman, cowering in fear. He's fleeing. You can stop fleeing now, please. Hello again. Hello. Uh, I, I he doesn't have any voice lines. I don't know. Yeah, he's supposed to have some voice lines for when you're doing Run Good Springs Run, but I broke everything. I broke everything. Well, let's see if Wishman went to his second location, because that's all I really wanted to show off. He should be in front of McCarran, which is. There it is, Southgate. There he is, I think. Well, there he is. Nick Lafferty's a hard boss, but she knows what she's doing, that's for sure. Hey there. Good to see you again, kid. Wasn't sure you'd still be alive. What with all the chaos lately? So much chaos, you have no idea. What are you doing here? Exactly where I expected you to be. I heard there were a couple bounties up for grabs. A couple fiend leaders that have been harassing farmers and kidnapping honest people. Three-card bounty, yeah. Somebody really needs to put a bullet in them. But the officers here weren't willing to pay enough for my service. Their loss. What will you do now? I've actually got a lead on a big bounty. A man as deadly as they come. I hear he's not too far from here, in a place called Westside. Going to Westside. There's bound to be a shitstorm when I try to take him, so you might want to avoid that area for a while. Yeah, he said he wasn't going to go after these deadly bounties, but he... He's going after somebody called Marco, who is infamous for being incredibly deadly. Let me assist you! 
Sorry, but I work alone, kid. Partners always get in my way, bumping me out of cover and constantly yammering about nothing. <laughs> oh, companions. Last partner I had strafed into my sight lines during a firefight. Shot him clean through the occipital. That was enough for me. Do you hunt bounties for the NCR often? I actually did quite a lot of jobs for them in California when Peterson was president. Lore. Back then, I was young and naive, willing to risk my life for a measly handful of caps. The NCR got a lot more out of me than I got out of them. I still chase their bounties from time to time, but only when I'm desperate. They keep trying to pay me with paper money, not fit to wipe my ass. I think it's... Yeah, I think this guy's writing is still pretty good. It holds up. Got any tips for an aspiring bounty hunter? Bounty hunting is a lot like gambling, but with higher stakes. If you take a risk and lose, you're dead. Period. This job is hardly ever worth the pay, but do enough jobs, and you'll get a reputation, which will allow you to charge more and be more selective. And it will intimidate people. I should go. Hey, I don't know if you're still using that plinky pea shooter, but I've got another weapon mod for it. All right. It's a night vision scope. Let's you see enemies at night. Because the best time to shoot at somebody is when they can't shoot at you. Hope you can put it to good use. I remember now. You can you can encounter him three different times in the Mojave, and every time you do, he gives you another weapon mod. One of the three weapon mods that are available for the uh, varmint rifle. He tips his hat to you as he walks off to the west. Okay. And now he's gone, and we can very clearly go to the west. He actually is... I think he shows up immediately. You don't have to wait a couple of weeks for him to show up. It's actually more to the northwest, isn't it? Do I like walking in front of guns? Only when it makes for a good punchline. Ha ha ha. Okay, so wherever Casa Madrid is, I believe that's where his... I believe that's where his third location will be. And that's over here? That's Millennia Arms. Hold on, I'll circle around and I'll find it. There we are, Casa Madrid. And there he is. Hey there! Hey there, Wishman. Look who it is again. Come to check up on your old friend Wishman, huh? Don't worry, I'm still in one piece. I was hoping to see you one more time before I left the Mojave. Got another weapon mod for your pea shooter, if you still got it. I don't! Where do you keep getting these things? I've had them for years, ever since I first started poking around dangerous areas. A varmint rifle was my first weapon, too. Selling the rifle was easy, but I'd been holding onto these mods for sentimental reasons. Pawning them off seemed too impersonal. But you remind me of myself back when I still had skin. <laughs> I think if anybody can put them to good use, it's you. Back when I still had skin. So what happened to that bounty you mentioned? Ah, stupidest thing. I'd heard a legendary outlaw had taken up residence in Westside. But it wasn't even the same guy. Just hey. some slumlord. Hey, Zero, welcome. Thank you for the sub. The guy I'm looking for is called Marco. But this guy's name is Marco. A simple mistake, since nobody around here uses FUCKING SURNAMES! So yeah, referencing that there's a character in Westside named Marco with a C, but uh, M Wishman mistook that character for the legendary outlaw Marco with a K from the New Vegas Bounty series by Some Guy 2000 That's what I'm referencing. Rat Slayer is fun though. See, that's the thing. You can't put... You can't put BB gun mods, or varmint rifle, you can't put varmint rifle mods on unique varmint rifles because of how antiquated and rudimentary New Vegas' modding system is. You can only put varmint rifle mods on the base game varmint rifle and not on the Rat Slayer. You can hear it in my voice now? Yeah, it came through loud and clear there, didn't it? So, what do you know about Marco? A prostitute once told me he's a straight man with an average package, wrapped in heavy pubes. I've never been sure what to do with that information. <laughs> More importantly, I know he's done a lot of bad things. He's also dangerous. No bounty hunter that pursues him ever returns. Oh, Rat Slayer was fully modded. My mistake. I, I never really actually used it. So you're not sure you'd best him, but didn't you say you only went after bounties you were sure you would be able to win? That's how you stayed alive this long? No. And normally that would be enough to dissuade me from chasing him. There's no guarantee I'd walk away from this one. But for Marco, I'll make an exception. Let's just say it's personal and leave it at that. I'm helping. I'm helping build up the myth. I'm going to help everyone, like everyone else in the, in the Some Guy series builds up Marco. And I'm contributing. <laughs> yup. Even though everyone acknowledges that 
they they weren't really too satisfied with how Marco played out. So maybe I shouldn't be fluffing him up like that. But whatever, it's fun to make a reference to um, a, a well-done mod, honestly. If you claimed Marco's bounty, would you be set for life? Well, it depends on how long I can live. As a ghoul, I'm basically immortal. Can't die of old age, but a bullet can still end my story. This isn't really about caps anyway. Somebody needs to kill him, and I might be one of the few people able to do it. I guess we'll see. Okay, well, let's talk about something else. Like what? Like, I should go. It sounds like the NCR and Legion are fixing to clash again soon. I won't be here when that happens, and you might want to think about leaving too. There are only a few things in this world worth the ultimate sacrifice, and this little tussle ain't one of them. But if you do decide to stick around, I wish you well. Stay safe, kid. Wishman tips his hat to you one final time and walks away, never to be seen again. Eh, that's a good note to end on. Yeah, I'm quite happy with how Wishman turned out, despite the fact that I, I doubt very many people have encountered him all three times. But, uh, yeah. I think I, there's still quite a lot of good writing here. It, it, it's been a while since I've gone through this mod that I made. Um, yeah, looking back on it, there are still some things I would definitely do differently. There are some spots where the quest design or the writing is lacking. But overall, I'm still quite content with how it came out. It's not bad. You think I did a good job? Well, thank you, Odyssey. Yeah, I was uh, looking to make another mod sometime soon, or maybe in, maybe you could call it an add-on, an expanded version of this particular mod, adding a, another f a few more NPCs or quest lines that were a bit more developed. Because a lot of these were little bite-sized characters. You know, I drop a character here, give them like 30 lines of dialogue, and say, ah, that's, that's good, and then I move on to the next one, make a simple quest here, simple quest there, but... I wouldn't mind making an actual fully fledged quest line or a fully fledged companion. A quest line that'll take like two or two, maybe a bit ambitious, an hour or two, like an actual adventure. Instead of a simple quest, it'll be an adventure or maybe a proper companion with uh, hundreds, if not thousands of voice lines so they don't like get too repetitive. Part. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lofty goal. It's a bit ambitious and I don't know, I don't know if I'll have the time or the patience to make it happen. Or if anyone would be interested in it, but, you know, I've got those aspirations. It'd be pretty cool if I could make those things a reality. Take these things out of my head and put them to pen and paper, as the, as the saying goes. It's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who did all the voices? The full credit list is on the Nexus webpage. Uh, the majority of them were done by Zach and myself. But there's also uh, Bullet UK, Francis Bird... Uh, Zach's wife now, Scottish drunkard, and uh, Rob is a pirate, my brother Rob. So those are all the voice credit contributors right there at NCR Taxes. <laughs> How many subs for a whole shindig mod? I, I can't make any promises. It's low priority at this point, obviously. My main focus is making sure that the main channel is up and running, that we can all continue to enjoy the Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 and Skyrim videos that we've been enjoying as long as we have, and keep that going. But in my spare time, when I'm not working on the main channel and when I'm not streaming with you guys, yeah, I might be able to do a bit more here. Just hop in for a few minutes, write down a couple of ideas, and who knows? Maybe it will one day be the second mod that I've made. Put a number on it and let us show the interest. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that. Nah. I wouldn't want to get anyone's hopes up. Right now, it's just in the conceptual phase. And, you know, this mod itself was in conceptual phase for a good two years before I actually started working on it. This was back when I had my crippling Overwatch addiction. and All, all my spare time was spent on that. It wasn't until I was able to set that game aside and force myself to work on this hobby here that I was actually able to make progress on it. And then once I started making progress on it, the momentum kept me going all the way to the end. But yeah, it's very difficult to get started. Getting started is probably the hardest part. What is this mod's name? Once again, this mod's name is called Mike Burnfire's Quests and NPCs. It's over on the Nexus. You are sick in bed, but you've been enjoying the stream? Well, thank you. Thank you, Zellion. This mod was cute. I'm glad you liked it. And thank you for linking, Big Joe. Uh, I think that might be the actual link to the mod. Thank you very much. I think that'll be it for now, though. How long have we been going? Uh, it's almost midnight. Yep, I wanted to stream for a good... Uh, it happened again. I wanted to stream for like two hours, and I streamed for like four hours, didn't I? 
Thank you for the gifted sub, Sir Ottoman. Thank you for gifting a sub to Succubus. Hopefully that also helps them to feel better. Oh god, this is like a five-hour stream. Oh my god. Yes, but that'll be it for me. Thank you, everyone, 